Welcome back to Numbers on the Board. You can't. Numbers on the Board, yes. Welcome back, welcome back. It is a very special and important episode. But before we get into that, I want to remind you to leave a like, subscribe to the channel as we are on our road to 100,000. Go to Apple, go to Spotify, give us five stars. Spotify, baby. We're here on Jersey Day. We are here on Jersey I don't know why every time we do a theme day, it has to be Jersey related. Like, I think this is our second time doing this. Which Where is do we, fine, I do guess. do like Hawaiian Day? You know Hawaiian why? We, day? we can do a lot of different stuff. You know why? Because <laughs> Mike bought a jersey and wanted to bust it open. So <laughs> it was Mike's idea. So you start off. What, what, what are we wearing today? I got the blue Los Angeles diesel jersey. Okay. Um, I was hoping for the Kobe, but you know those is usually a little bit more rare. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's a Slash little bit harder expensive. to find. expensive. That's, that's what he means, expensive. Well, I also would have to just order that. And this one was more in a timely matter, but... You know, I'm, I think I think I'm rocking it today. Yeah, you got a fit on. This time, you, you know, it was his idea because he put a fit Shoes. on. It literally looks like you're in the LA vibe. Like you literally, like you chilling in LA. That's we got to get you a black undershirt. <laughs> I thought about wearing black, but <laughs> yeah. I thought it looked better with white, so I wore white. Okay. So that's that's that was my mindset behind. It. Okay. I had on the black, okay. but I was like, if you think white looked better with it, then I ain't gonna I ain't gonna argue with it. But I I know sometimes. I've had jerseys that I ain't had that undershirt to match. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, I gotta wear a white. But if you if you went with white purposefully, then I, I ain't mad at it. I decided to rock the Darius Miles Clipper jersey. Uh shout out to shout out to Darius, Illinois' very own. Knuckleheads, St. Louis. Mm -hmm. St. Louis. East St. Louis. See Louis. Yeah. But it's Illinois. East St. Louis is Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I always I always that's dope. It's part of St. Louis is in Illinois. Mm hmm It's um is JoJo from East St. Louis? JoJo is from St. Louis, but he ne never told me if it's East St. Louis. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I feel like he's somewhere close. Where is uh, Nelly and Jason Tatum from? St. Louis. Yeah. But is that East St. Louis? No. Okay. Yeah. okay. Different so spot. Now you now you done messed my head up. Because you know who from East St. Louis who, who never told me that? Who? Even though I know it's like right there. Darnie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Darnie is East St. Louis. Wow. But in my mind... I've always, because he's rep St. Louis, so I always was. You always like, thought he was in Missouri. Yes. Okay. Yes. Instead of Illinois. Yeah, but I get he still claimed he be wearing that Cardinals hat. Maybe he. I don't know. <laughs> um, I got the Mono Ginobili on. My fault. You know, one of the uh, one of the goats. One of my my favorites in my childhood. Best six men all time. No, I won't go that far. But just because he, he's so much more than the six man, I'll let Jamal Crawford or Lou Will. He is like a – Manu is an all-star. He was. So yes. it's like I don't want to just put him as a six. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As a, Manu, is, Manu is a dude that in today's game, we would all have been like, man, we want to see him with his own team. But it was better that he stayed with the Spurs. But you get my drift. Yeah. He would have probably had a harder and tight take, take, take off if he went and got his own team. There's a possibility. I forget what team it was. But some team offered him a bag one offseason. He decided to stay. Really? Probably okay. better for his career. Oh, I yeah. think so, too. Uh, I went with the AI. Uh, the classic Sixers jersey. Can't go wrong uh, with the AI boy. My first time. I've, I've I've never been interested in buying a Sixers jersey, but then I saw this and I was like, man, that old logo just hits so different. Mm -hmm. Like the classic Sixers logo is one of the best. And I, it just it sucks that we see brands, these NBA teams, change their logos that everybody loved, and it's like they just switch. Like the Spurs logo, I don't think that's ever gonna change. It's it's always been that good. I don't even know what that is. It's a spur. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's right always in the state. That. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. But a lot of us have, like, revisionist history and, um. and, like, have the nostalgia factor in a lot of stuff. Okay. I, I, can I'm, see that. I don't know how it was in the time being, but I don't know if in 2002 they was like, that's the best logo of all time. That's and here true. we are 22 years later, like, that might be. <laughs> I will say in 2002, this is one of the most popular jerseys I've, I've seen in Chicago as a kid growing up. Yeah. And um, I remember when they did change the Sixers jerseys, I, I was happy that they changed it. Not And when they change it, I don't think it's because they think this is bad, but everything is supposed to evolve and go up in a certain way. So I yeah. think that's what it is. But you do have certain uh, establishments and logos that, like the Bulls, yeah. prestigious, don't touch it, don't mess with it. Um, the Spurs probably won't touch it. The Celtics with it. won't touch it. Celtics. Yeah. But I can imagine Celtics with a different logo. Yeah, it would be weird. But I do <laughs> like when teams at, at least try. But I, I agree with you. If if you try and it run its course, you can always lay your hat on that logo, Philadelphia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do they so, even, have they ever worn these as like a throwback? I've never seen Jordan B wear that. They should, no. they should have like throwback days. 
what teams wear like the old vintage ones. They, they used really to. Sh- when we were young, when we were young, they used to. Yeah. You would have a, a whole yeah. game and they wearing there's there's uh there's Kobe and Le- Kobe with Lamar Odom and them against the Warriors a, a few years ago. Not a few years ago, but um they they went so retro that they was wearing Lil Jerry West shorts. Oh, they went wow. that retro. Damn. Somebody in the comments will know what I'm talking about. They'll post it on Twitter or something, but if you yeah, they they went that retro. So they used to do it. I don't, you know, who knows what's going on now. Now they more concerned with uh what's the the, the city jersey. Yeah, well they want to yeah. keep making more money. If the Sixers went back to that jersey, I mean, yeah, you're gonna probably get your Joel and B version of it. But if we make new jerseys every single season, boom, a Joel and B jersey collection now got 13 different jerseys in his short career so far. And we've seen people do it. We saw yeah. a Pat Beverly fan that had every Pat Beverly jersey. Or a Russell Westbrook fan that had everyone except for the Lakers. Was that why? That's a real fan. Yeah, like, because real the fan. Lakers version of Russell Westbrook, oh. that you era. Can forget, just, you can literally forget about it. It's like it weighed on the heat on the Bulls. Yes. It, don't, it doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. Shouldn't even talk about it ever again. You know, you know, it's a, a good business idea, and um, I guess it's not a good business idea because Mitchell and Ness probably do it. But in an extreme way, rare jerseys, like a, a place that just had like where we got our jerseys from. If there was a shop like that, but they had just rare jerseys, so you go in. We don't even have Shaq. Shaq to standard. <laughs> We got the Nick Van Exel Laker jersey. Okay. We got the Iguodala 76er jersey. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah, Darius Miles will be a rare one. We got the Darius Miles. Darius Miles played here for two seasons. Um, We got the, uh, the what, play, play where? With the Clippers. Oh, that was a big part of their culture. Yeah. that Who he used to do this to? When KB did that, who was Darius Miles doing that to? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Quentin Richardson. Y'all ain't never oh. seen any show? Knuckleheads, no. at least? No, I've never seen Knuckleheads. Oh, uh, did you know it was a show? No. Damn. <laughs> it is what it is. Oh, today's episode, we're doing our award show, the NOTB official award ballots. Um, as I was doing it yesterday, really easy. I want to, it was. I t- but I told you it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, want, I want a Rondo Celtics jersey. That's okay. what I want. Or you can get a Rondo Bulls jersey. No, I want nah. a Rondo <laughs> Celtics jersey. I want a Rondo Celtics jersey. Yeah. Well, it was easy, though. It was easy. So. Because it was easy, there are certain awards where I'm gonna give some flowers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going. I'm, the old me in the old days would change the entire award and be like, "No, I'm giving this. I'm giving this award to blah 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 because I want to be different." But instead, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the proper respect to the proper respect, and I'm gonna just try to give some flowers to some guys that come to my mind. I do love the idea of us all having, you know, created some awards. Yes, yeah, so we created some fake awards because yeah. Pretty consensus who the MVP is and yep. DPOY stuff, but we have our own individual awards that we're going to be doing as well, just to spice things up a little bit. I'm looking forward to that part of it. Did y'all watch the uh, college basketball championship last night? I had it on, but I didn't watch it. Okay, I didn't Same. watch it either. Okay, it was, you know, shout out to UConn. My bra- <laughs> my bracket had an 87, percent which puts me in the the um, NOTB poll at like 30th. I don't know how mm-hmm. many people submit it, but Damn, 30th outside. You, you had 87 percent of your bracket. Wide, yeah, but right? that's not really that insane. Like, um. Carlos Boozer had 99.4. For real? I swear to you. Wow. That's Carlos crazy. I thought 89. he missed four. one thing. Uh, no, well, I, thought, I'm, I would assume that. No, nah, it was more than one. I but. thought 80% was a – he might have had NC State going on a run. Oh. But I, I, I thought the 80% was impressive. I, I don't know where I stood in – I didn't put, in submit mine to numbers on the board because I had made a numbers on the board, and it was already a numbers on the board. Nope, I wasn't told. Oh. And I wasn't finna submit it twice. But I didn't <laughs> even know what I finished with because I deleted the app. I'm Once sorry, Carlos Boozer had game. a 99.7. Damn. 99.7, which shouldn't even – how? Uh, he's got, he got the final four correct. So, yeah, he, he had NC oh, State going on the run, and that's all that really matters. Because um, he also had, like, Houston in there. Who was his obviously champion? Obviously, Houston. Uh, he got the c- correct champion. Me too. Damn. Wow. Did y'all have UConn? No. I didn't make a bracket. Did you have you? Hey, you didn't make a bracket? Hey, on some real shit. You my man's, I love you. And they be saying I be, be on I be on your what? ass. I'm gonna get on your ass about that. There I, is cultural things that you need no, to be a I part know, of. I no, just, no, 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 no. There is no excuse. I don't wanna hear shit, but you saying you gonna make one next year. I'll make one. I okay. No, do, no, 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 no. I don't wanna hear I'll make one. I say I'm going to make one. I, I, that's the same thing. No, I'm I'm <laughs> going to make one is more definite for me. I'm going to make one. Wait, what did your resume say? I said I'm gonna make one. He yeah. said, I'll make one. <laughs> that exactly that sounds like something you just say to, <laughs> to move on. Thank you. Thank you. For me, more definitive is I'm going to do it. I'll go. I'm going to do it. We'll, we'll, see, like, we'll see next March. I'll, that's what shout out to my mama. I'll do it. 
<laughs> I'll take the garbage out. Well, no, I'm going to take the garbage out because that's some <laughs> shit that has to happen. <laughs> but, House uh, just stink. <laughs> Piles of garbage is everywhere. <laughs> but if my mama says some shit, my mama want me to keep. My mama kept telling me to get this app. It'll just help me with my taxes. And for a long time, I said, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I never end up getting it. Yeah. Until yesterday, when I completed my taxes, now it's I'm going to get it. And I, I downloaded it. But that's why I said, I wasn't lying, but I was just kind of like, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll, I'll see. <laughs> Not a lot of people say, I'm going to see. That sounds stupid. I'm going to see? Yeah. No, I'm going to go make sure this happened. But if you wishy washy, is I'll see. You going to play tonight? I'll see. You know? <laughs> What's going on, though? Like we, we going right awards? into the awards? Let's yeah. get into the awards. Starting off with the big award. Oh, man. Is there, is, so we had the conversation a few weeks back about, uh, I, I brought to the table that for me, there was two finalists. It was Luka Doncic and uh, Nikola Jokic is my finalist. And since then, I've made my decision, obviously, and it's Nikola Jokic. Yeah. I've made my decision on Luka Doncic. Okay, I'm happy that it's not consistent. I'm on Luka Doncic too. All right, two two I'm split. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. What was the determining factor for you? Split. You just said Luka. I mean, you just said Jokic, didn't you? No, I, oh, I thought I heard Jokic. I could have swore I heard him say Jokic. Okay, okay, I'm not tripping. He said, "Oh no, I didn't say Jokic. I didn't say anything." So what do you have? Giannis. I'm just joking. I got Jokic. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Two two split. Uh, let's talk about it though. What, what was the determining factor for y'all to go Luka over Jokic? And then I'll give you my reason. <clears throat> Both have been just carrying their teams throughout the course of the season. But, I mean, the numbers for Luka just kind of stand out the page. Obviously, 33 points a game, second in assists, second in three-point <laughs> makes. Like, he's been doing it all for his team. And I know we, we always talk about the – you got to kind of nitpick a little bit and take away from the other a little bit. And I honestly think that Denver's team all around is just more like – solidified with Jokic compared to like Luka's team he most of the time has to backpack that team you know like they literally just came back with the Rockets who they play the Rockets yeah him and Kyrie Irving literally had to backpack them from down 20 to kind of win that and shout out to Dante Exum for that shot but most of the night this is a night on night basis two corner threes from the left this is a night on night basis for this guy to kind of carry his team and I love the fact that Luca has you. You can notice that there's an improvement on the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. um, he's definitely way more engaged than we've seen in the past. Even with him having this increased offensive load that he's taken on, he went from 30 to 34 points. And you would probably think his defense is probably gonna stay the same, but no, he's even looked better on the defensive side of the ball. Like you see him sitting down, guys try to attack him, and he 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 holds it on. Now I'm not saying he's locking up. But he's definitely way more engaged. Even off the ball, he's way more engaged and locked into what's going on. And I think that just shows real leadership. He held himself accountable. He knew what his weakness was, and he came into this season. And you could tell that mentally he's way more engaged on the defensive side of the ball than he was in the past. Mm. And I, I, uh -huh. I think he's a he's the one that I think you look at Wes, and you think that not specifically his team, but you look at Luka Doncic like, he could probably challenge somebody and go to the finals and maybe win a championship. I think I, I think his team is a part of it. I think they have the scariest team going into the playoffs. They don't have the best team. Yeah, I said yeah, that on Twitter sure, and people sure. didn't understand how to differentiate the two. Mm -hmm. The Celtics are the best team, but I think the scariest would be the Mavericks because they're gonna they're in a place where they would play somebody as an underdog. Yeah. I don't think the Celtics facing the A seed and the A seed is coming in like, oh, don't they of course they're scared. But like they don't have anything to really lose. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going against the best team. They're probably going to beat our ass. But the Mavericks are going against potentially, you know what I mean? The we'll see how the Pelicans. That, right. The Clippers no, it's, specifically. It's, set. it's pretty much set um, with the Clippers versus Mavericks as the 4-5. Okay. I'm scared of with that. With a week left. I have all of this pressure on me. It's close. They have this. I'm scared of that. Yeah, and the last time the Clippers played them, he had Kyrie Irving next to him. <laughs> the Clippers end up winning, I think, both of those series, right? But yeah. it was like mm -hmm. really close. Luca hit the game winner and everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah, now Luca got some reinforcements, so it's going to be a good series. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about Luca. Like for me, yeah. when I'm doing this MVP stuff, I'm not going to say this player's up here because this player does this. It's not. That's not the way I really think about it. It's hard to take anything away from Luca. He's having a phenomenal season, and he's my number two. But for me, the determining factor because all of the candidates are so great, you have to like find one little thing that you can really attach yourself to um to be the thing you bugging me out by the way with those sunglasses by the way i'm just <laughs> you need to take them on not it no, don't matter but I every time you, i look I that want way you to keep them on <laughs> yeah, they do go with my own i don't know why it fits your vibe right now 
other than us being in a lightless studio, like a literal <laughs> low, no sunlight studio. Hey, did you wear those yesterday to see no. the clips? No, good I didn't. answer. I was inside. Good answer. Okay, I just want to make sure we're not better to see no uh, something wrong with your eyes in about three we days. Went, we went golf and he looked dead at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, did we have the glasses? Saying. No, I'm this, joking, we I'm went joking, well I'm before joking, it started. Anyway, for me, Nikola Jokic is, is the winner because I, I don't know how to put it into words, but there is for the Denver Nuggets, there is no other option. Yeah, we are playing through and with Nikola Jokic, no matter what the situation is. And when we are on, when he is on the court, there's not a team in basketball that can stop us. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with Luka Doncic, but Luka Doncic does have like an alternative thing, right? Kyrie Irving is right there, and I think for the third time in their career, they both put up 35 plus points against the the Rockets, the Rockets. or whatever. But um, with Jokic, it's like this or nothing. And if it ain't Jokic, if it ain't Jokic, then it ain't nothing for us. If it ain't Jokic, we're gonna be awful. Um, mm-hmm. And we see that time and time again where he goes to the bench, and the team starts off with Jokic in the game. They have a seven point lead. He goes to the bench. He comes back. They're down by two. And it happens time and time again. And the thing that he does is claw his team back into these games and win a lot of these games. So th- that is yeah. the determinant factor for me. Yeah, I mean, to piggyback off of that, he just checks the boxes. You know what I'm saying? I don't really have to search and look for anything that to, to cling on to because he does it all. He has the numbers, which you referenced with Luca. So they both have that. Um, he has the wins, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He has the moments. And for me, the most fortunate thing for all, a lot of these guys is that Joel and B got hurt. I'm not even going to lie to you. For a long if time. If he played the way he yeah. was playing. It was, yeah, it was that, consensus it was Joel. Yeah, that was, that was even, and, and I like that for Joel because coming off of the one he had last year and the playoff uh, disappointment that people had, we came into the season, it was like, man, it should have went to Jokic or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Joel and B was like, oh, well, I got better. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I will throw that out there for my Philadelphia people. Joel and B was definitely on his way and, and would have and should have and could have been in a, this conversation as the leader. But, I, yeah, I, I'm with KB. I don't have anything negative to say about Jokic. I mean, Luka, Jokic, or right Shea Gilders Alexander. I want to give Shea some flowers because as yeah. a young guy carrying the charge for a young team, they were really impressive. We all figured that they was going to be better. But to be at the top competing. And that was another thing that was impressive with Jokic and the Nuggets is that they won a championship. They've been this team that could be at the top of the, the conference um, for all of these years. And people still really can't figure them out. The championship fatigue isn't there. Um, and no matter what, they stay – like, Jamal Murray got stretches where he hurt his ankle, knee, whatever. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter. Jokic just can still deliver. Um, Michael Porter Jr. go through tough stretches where he's not making shots. Don't matter. Um, and that's one of those things for me that I, I just love about uh, Jokic, but I'm glad Luka is here because yeah. I believe he is not going anywhere. If you watch this show for the past four years, I think Luka has been my pick. <laughs> Next year, you're gonna, you're gonna hit mm-hmm. one of these years. Well, I, I, he, Mo- hopefully, multiple years. When he yeah. get, I, that's the point I was making. When he gets it, I think he's going to get a, f- a, a few of them. Mm-hmm. He's going to be like Jokic when he gets his. I think he's going to be in that conversation to win multiple. Yeah, I think my final thought process when I was kind of looking at it is because there's a long time for oh for a long long time it was Jokic, but I think it was kind of like. Final pro- final process, Jokic was is the best player in the world, but to me, I think Luka Doncic had the best season, and that's how I kind of gauged it off that. Now that's funny that you say that, yeah, because I was watching, um, I was watching a game. I I, I can't say it was the the Rockets game, but I was watching a game with Luka, and I was asking myself that, like, Jokic is going to be the MVP. He's going to be the most valuable, and he definitely has his times. He's the best player in the world. But when I watch Luca, and I've I'm, I've really dove into them specifically after the All Star breakup more than I was previous, I think Luca is the best player in the world. Ooh, I think Luca is the best player in the world. I think this playoffs, he could stamp it for everybody else to feel the way. Okay, I, I'm not I'm not saying he is. This is how I feel. I'm 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 open to disagreements. I respect the disagreements. There's going to be a lot of people that disagree in the comments, as they should, because I think the game is getting to a point where somebody in Philadelphia may feel the same way about Joel Embiid on some nights. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do think Luka Doncic, he could snatch it right here in these playoffs. See, I, I, when you say he can snatch it, I don't think you're wrong, because I don't think he's there just yet. But I think, matter of fact, I look at all the talent around, and I think if they can challenge somebody like Jokic or Luka Doncic, 
we have a couple people that try to do that mm -hmm. and it's like we're set for the future you know so i'm just glad at the talent but i think it can if he gets a finals that means for obviously he battled through the west which is going to be all tough and then the celtics who are assuming is probably going to be on the other side for him to take them out too that's probably one of the hardest runs we've seen in a minute yeah i i just think that i i don't know i'm gonna just be the first person to go out there he's the best player in the world i just don't see anything that can stop him for I, me it goes yoke Giannis, luca and bead as my mm -hmm. top four players in basketball yeah, that's how i would look at it as well that's but like I, the same order but i i, I can agree with that luca has the ability to take it yeah he but does. i just don't think he's done it just yet because yeah. we saw the run from nicole Jokic last year where it was not a single soul slash coach and staff slash 15 man roster that can stop him and he carried that on for another regular season we don't know what the playoffs is going to hold um but most people are going to say that they believe the Denver Nuggets are the favorite to win the championship they are and um them and the Celtics right and major great now they have a well-constructed team top five at least but most of that is big yoke being the best offensive system we've seen in basketball in a very long time it's I think Luca head into the same way. The Mavericks have just had a hard time figuring out his team versus the Nuggets, who did a good job drafting it and assembling. They had to assemble in a different way, but the the Kyrie, the lively pickup, the even the Exum and the, having Tim Hardaway Jr. and PJ, they started to got it. I think yeah. I think Luca is going to become the mm -hmm. best player in the game. I think with Jokic, it's just so hard because he does all that from the center spot. And I think it's just, for one, you, it's very hard to match up with that because he just does so much. But he just takes advantage of anything you kind of throw at him. And Luka does the same thing. Yep. But Jokic just has a size. Like, I mean, he's damn near seven foot making all these plays. It's just like he can just look over the defense and make the read. Granted, Luka can too. But I think just with size, you could do so much more uh, impacting the game. Yeah, I think uh, that for the front office of the Mavericks, it's just unfortunate for them. They drafted Luka, but then he was just so damn good. You couldn't really draft a team and build around them. Like you had to immediately be one of the top seeds in the West, and now you don't have any good draft picks to bring in good guys to fit well, complement next to them. They, they had one lively. year they missed. Well, lively, yeah. And then this year, lively. Yeah. Or last year, lively. I think that's like usually when you draft a guy, there's usually like a few more years of tanking mm -hmm. to where you're like you're bringing in multiple young yeah. lottery picks. They didn't get that luxury. No. Nope. They, yeah, they had that. That's also because they had a few years. They or had not Dennis a few years. Junior. Boom. Uh -huh. So Luca should have been a cherry on top. Yeah. If you no shot at Dennis Smith Jr., but if you hit that draft pick, it wasn't as high as the Luca one. But if you hit that one and then you get Luca, you have a two headed monster there with him. Yeah. So But then we get to like butterfly effect. Because if they hit that draft no, pick, they might they might oh, I didn't think about that, but they don't they might not get Luka. They might win one, two to three more Boom. games if yep. Dennis Smith Jr. is better correct. and now they're in a worse position to make the Trey Young trade. So it's, a, it's a lot of the Absolutely correct. There. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I like the conversation. Who's your three? Oh, do you have Jokic too? Jokic too? Yeah, yeah. yeah Jokic two. Have Luka I have Shea two, three. And then I have Shea at three. Shea's Shea. three for me as well. Shea. Giannis is four. Giannis could have been three. Yeah. They got them dudes. Them dudes stripping over there. I don't really yeah. have much words to really say about them dudes. Huge game tonight for them. <laughs> Huge oh, game man, tonight for them. But they, a lot they've of been that, embarrassed. The Knicks loss don't hurt as much if you handle your business against those other teams. Yes. What was it? Wizards, Wizards, Memphis, Raptors, Raptors, and then yeah. you lose to the Knicks. Yeah, like that's and and the what the Magic are a game behind you right now. And Knicks tonight, are a game behind. And tonight is tough. Who is it, it again? I know it's a Celtics. big game. It's oh, would, at, this, <laughs> at, 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 at this point, I'm losing. Magic have the two seed and play the Heat or the 76ers. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, seriously, go ahead. Y'all better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got it. That's it. Y'all got it. <laughs> Y'all so damn good, huh? Okay. Shout out to the Magic, though. No, shout but out to them. That, mm -hmm. What they've done this season has been ridiculous. They have. That was but, my 11 seed. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then the guess what? The Magic did tell you. Magic fans did tell you they was gonna be this good this year. No, they. But no Magic fan thought they were competing for the two seed this year. <laughs> at least you can say that. <laughs> I went. I went on a six man if show. I, if I say it, I get shot at. I went on a six man <laughs> show, which is a Orlando Magic podcast. And before the season started, I was like, hell, if everything break perfectly, we'll be talking play-in against each other. Because yeah. Bulls, they're the goddamn two-seed almost. Like, yeah. even then, they were expecting to hopefully have a play-in run. Yes, I think everybody expected And they're that. safe. They're not safe-safe, because, again, anything can happen, but mostly safe from a play-in existence yeah. at all, which is crazy. 
Um, a lot of that yeah. is them taking care of business against the really bad teams. Like they have a great record against the bad teams. Um, the defense is some of the best in ball. They go get Off, some love great with these awards for sure. Let's for let's transition. Do you have a fifth? No, no, no. MVP ballot is five guys. I, this is a two man race. Yo, uh, uh, Tatum <laughs> is number five. That's I'm not mad at. Yeah. Okay, Kyrie cool. Irving, stop playing. On me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they better be the so do you seventy and, do you, and twelve? Do you agree with KB said what? That they don't think that they was sec- that people wasn't expecting the second yeah, seed. Yeah. Okay. I don't. The fans just anybody that said they respect the two seed is just lying. There's no way. This seems like the third, the fourth youngest team in basketball. You could not have expected this. I'm gonna let y'all say it because if I say it, OKC fans have a better case, right? Oh, they we expect because they had Shea. Yeah. Paolo is great. He's an All Star. But season. he was an All NBA last year, right? Like Shea was, and Shea was first team last year. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway. Let's go to Rookie of the Year. Consensus one pick. Victor, Victor Wibiyama. Wibiyama. It's, it's, none, it's, no, it's, no, it's not even close. No. It's uh, literally like. It was for like two gap. months or so. Yeah, but Chet did make it a little interesting, but. Yeah. He just different, bro. He make me mad watching him. Because you know it's just like, I wish I, I wish I had a young player on my, like, I feel like it's got to be bro, fun as hell to be bro, a Spurs fan. No. You have LeBron and Anthony Davis. You cannot be telling us. I'm just saying, he's always coming back to the Lakers. I'm saying, this is one of the generational talents. You have the greatest of all time on your team. Right now. You don't got to go back to the Lakers. We're talking about Wemby right now. No, you just said (laughs) it made you wish that you had a player on your team You went back to the Lakers yourself. That's what you did. No, no, no. It had me jealous of being a Spurs fan. Just having that young player that's like that on your team, because it's just like the sky is the that, limit with I, that. I, I, I like KB's art. You can't have everything. <laughs> that's all right. That's, that's the Laker right. fan in him. We got the greatest of all time, but damn, I wish we had Wimby. <laughs> I'm not saying I want him on the Lakers right now, but I'm just saying there's a perspective. It's like having from the Spurs to be how ass they were and they got Vic and to see how good he is, that's got to be a good ass feeling. You remember how bad y'all were before you got LeBron? We were still fun though. The Spurs are definitely fun. Very fun. They weren't fun with before Vic. It's How many better? You stop why you stopped becoming yeah. a Spurs fan until Vic came back. Is that true or not? <laughs> He's not a Spurs fan. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not calling it. <laughs> you see him deflect yeah, right yeah, onto yeah. you. <laughs> he don't he don't yeah, you are deflecting. But he don't get he he, do, he no longer gets to call himself a Spurs fan. We're not doing that. Yeah, just that, like you're no longer a Portland Trailblazers fan. So if that shit starts to pop <laughs> Are you he, agreeing with that? He has no choice. How? The reason is because this is, and this is just for the show. You can yeah. do whatever the hell you want to do in your real personal life. I, I have to say these type of things because every time this come up, they in the comments thinking that you bullying I'm, him. I'm taking his remote. <laughs> he go home and he trying to watch the Trailblazers, and I pop up. Give me that remote. <laughs> you can't watch this. Thing. But when the pool suck, he stood by his side and talked about it. When they suck, the motherfuckers are still very, very bad. When the Knicks suck. <laughs> No, y'all was worse than with y'all. Oh, for I, sure. But we when the bad. Knicks suck, I I took that to the chin. Lakers ain't do too much sucking since we've existed, but they did have some sucking. The Lonzo Ball G League stuff. The Chris came and laying on the bench. We wasn't a podcast when that was going on, so we didn't get to see his reaction to that. I was still fanning. Back he was then. still supporting. <laughs> you have notoriously only supported each one of the fan bases you're attached to when it's convenient. He talking about fear the deer. <laughs> Built an ass to him. Spurs, DeMar DeRozan, LaMarcus Aldridge being able to make the playoffs. Derek White, DeJounte, some type of all-star uh, validity. Validity. Boom, I'm rocking. Portland with Dame, <laughs> CJ. We still in the playoff. I'm rocking. Chicago, when they became the second seed, when Alonzo was healthy, couldn't keep the name out of their mouth. <laughs> Soon as some adversity hit, we don't hear you talk about any of these things. <laughs> In order to be that fan, and I, I hope— I feel like I I'll, still talk about the Bulls sometimes. When they're giving you free tickets. Like, I was still up here get, talking about how I believe in Ayo DeSumo. I think your Bulls fan was one that won't waver. It's just sometimes it goes— uh, Oh, you won't get rid of it, but sometimes it does go up, up yeah, and down. It's like a it roller does. coaster. I'm not going to lie. It does. Yeah. I could be honest And I about think it. some of that comes also because you sit next to one. And so when he is showing his fandom, you feel obligated because you know the but things we've like said. But I feel like I'm all, my heart has always been with Chicago, so like I'm always going to be a Bulls fan. I feel that. Like that's what made like when Derrick Rose was drafted in 08, That was my that was my team. I, I agree with that, yeah. which is why they're not a team that I brought up. But I yeah. do feel like well, I did bring them up, but I, it was more so you. We ain't letting you be a Blazers or Trailblazers. I mean, I'm a not. Gonna, I, I, remember watched, he dropped I haven't the, watched he dropped the Utah Jazz. I haven't watched many Blazers games. 
Not really worth watching. Not blaming you. Yeah. <laughs> Not blaming you. I would you. never say you're wrong. The Chicago one, you, I mean, we're going we gonna to yeah. let you keep. But Thank when you. the Blazers get their shit together. When Scoop become. Shaden. <laughs> oh, Shaden. <laughs> no, no shot at Scoop. <laughs> but, yeah, when they get their shit together, I'm a Blazers fan. But, no, it's all love. How crazy that you stopped being a Spurs fan the year before Wimby got there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That's that like the true. Wizards deciding to tank the year after Wimby. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> Y'all saw his new logo? Shout yeah, out, the yeah. new logo fire. Shout out to them. Because Lord knows I don't want to see Vic in a, with DC. Yeah. Imagine Ooh. him. Jordan, Red, white, yeah. and blue. I'm good. I'd rather see him in this. this I wonder how the offseason goes if they win the lottery. Who? Uh, the Wizards. Like, what trades do they pull off? Kyle do they Kuzma, still already yeah, have Jordan Poole? Was Jordan Poole before the no, draft? No. Bradley Beal might still be in Washington. That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't remember when the I was Jordan saying Poole no. trade happened. I was saying no to them going to get him, but yeah. I don't know if or when he got traded off the top of my brain. So, I don't know that. I guess it's not that important. Wimby's our consensus, number one. Yeah. Uh, one of my awards, fake awards that I was going to do, um, I actually still here, but I, ch- I changed it a little bit. It's called I'm Going to Miss Him. Which is once the playoffs start, there's obviously ten teams that we mm. no longer get to watch mm. watch anymore. And I was gonna ask from those ten teams, who is the guy you're gonna miss the most? Nobody even comes close to Wimby. It do, yeah. yeah. So I shifted that award a little bit. Uh, that's how incredible he he has been. And we basically got what three games left of his rookie season, four games left of his rookie season. And some of the stuff he did just as a rookie, as we see like how he started from even the summer league that we went to to where he is now, like he did not make it. But Lord knows I went to put him on an All-NBA team. Yeah. He didn't make it. I, he honestly surprised me every time I watch him. Mm-hmm. Like, I told you. He, he had one pass on the – what would you say? He in year three. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> well, no, he's in year two. He, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, it would just be the simple stuff, too. And I don't know if it's just because he's so tall and it's just like the body type or whatever. But, like, he had a play where he was just coming up and he made, like, a little point guard pass oh, yeah. all the way down to the paint. It's like, man, that dude is literally 7'6". Seven, seven, I always seven, get five. tripped off on the step-back threes. Yeah, how many him to stop falling in love with it so much? The other day, they had the bench. Always been my type criteria for him. The other day, he shot like two of twelve from three. I'm like, you took twelve. He should be a guy that averages thirty on the course of his career. I'm standing on that. They had uh, he I think he kicked it to Jeremy Sohan. No, no, it was Keldon Johnson. He kicked it to Keldon Johnson, and he had kind of rolled back to the basket, and he was so open. But Keldon Johnson took the three. And it was just one. He hit it too, but it was just like it's gonna look bad on film if he missed that shot. I feel like when they go into film sessions this summer, it's gonna be a lot of plays of like y'all missed a wide open. Seven, well, he's gonna be talking to Trey Young. I often say, so I don't it's think a little different. They gonna have those. Not a lot of new faces will be in it. <laughs> <laughs> Two lottery picks. Maybe it's even Tyus if, and Trey Jones. Even if you don't make a trade, yeah. Even if you don't make a trade, you're bringing in two rookies. Have money and all. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of new faces. Second on the list is probably Chet Holmgren for everybody. Yep. Absolutely, Chet. If, if this was any regular season, Chet Holmgren probably win Rookie of the Year. It's yeah. just unfortunate. He ended up uh, hurting himself last year and now has to be in the, the real class with Wimby. Uh, he's been great holding things down for the OKC Thunder. Yep. I Brandon think, Miller third. Yeah, Brandon Miller. I think what Brandon Miller is doing is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Like. He's a 17-point-per-game scorer without a point guard. He hasn't had a point guard all season to even set him up and make it easy. He's been having a pretty much – damn near be the number one option. I know Miles Bridges is still going to get his shots. But, like, for the most part, uh, Brandon Miller has been out there just doing his thing, taking on the top defensive assignments because LaMelo hasn't been there. And I, I'm very impressed with what he's done this year. You've definitely seen him take strides of becoming better, way more comfortable with putting the ball on the floor than he was <laughs> in the beginning of the season. Everything with his game is just starting to evolve, and he's looking very good. I, I, I'm so happy for Brandon Miller that he had this rookie year because I hated the dialogue around him versus Scoot as if Scoot was, like, miles and miles beyond him. Yeah. Um, as somebody who had watched both, I wasn't against either one. I didn't, I, You know, I like Brandon Miller more because I like wings, especially when you already have a LaMelo Ball type guard there. But I just did not like that discourse. It was as if it was like Brandon Miller was some bum. Yeah. I don't know if y'all remember that around you know. the draft time. But and this is no shot at Scoot because Scoot is still a young guard. You know, I don't put too much stock into um, a bad rookie season. I, mean, I put stock oh, into shaky. it. But you know, if next year he comes <clears> out, he's ten times better. We won't. I won't even care. Be yeah. as, if you're going to be good and grow and and and, and uh, develop, I could care less about how your rookie year looked. Yeah. Yeah. 
did again yesterday. He was started off nine for nine. He talking about Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller. No, nah, yeah, I, I I owe him an apology. I misjudged him. <laughs> Oh, he I, wasn't on the Brandon Miller. I, I, look, I didn't directly think was, I, in the camera and apologize I mis, to D Mills. I misjudged Brandon Miller. We met to him. D Mills. I didn't. Not that what it was like I though? thought it was bad or anything. I honestly thought it would be the other way around in terms of like Scoop probably had a year one. It would probably take Brandon a little bit more time to get acclimated. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, for all these young guys, except there's exceptions like Vic. But most of these guys, you're looking to be really good in year two, year three, year, year down the road. You know, so it was more so about who's going to acclimate faster. And uh, B Mills got that right now. We'll see what ends up happening. Before we get to DPOY, six man of the year, coach of the year, most approved player, clutch player of the year, all NBA teams, all defensive teams, all rookie teams, we got to hear from our sponsor. Why should you bet with Caesar Sportsbook? Two words, Caesar's rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Let's go to Defensive Player of the Year. I feel like this player had it wrapped up since like the first month of the season. Has not looked back. <laughs> like the Rookie of the Year award. Did I say Rookie of the Year? No, no, I'm saying it's like the Oh, it's like the Rookie of the Year, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Rudy Gobert. He's anchoring that defense. Last year. <laughs> He's anchoring that defense. Last year wasn't that great of a defense with him anchoring it. And then this year, somehow they, they've revamped that whole team. <gasps> so you're saying we should give things time? Yes. And we shouldn't rush yes. immediately for yes. instant gratification? I love and that. And I think. Oh, no, you can go. He has changed the whole thing. He was washed last season. <laughs> Now, they did still give up a lot. Like, no matter what ends up happening, unless they win a goddamn championship. Yeah, they gave up five first-round picks. <laughs> they gave up a lot to give Rudy Gobert. But for a team that had one playoff, or I'm sorry, two playoff appearances over the last 20 years, this is a team now that's one of the top three seeds and will be that. I, I cannot love it anymore uh, for Rudy Gobert. You know, he's been my favorite center in basketball for like eight years straight now. Yeah. Um, so to see him go out there and – and prove that defense. Last year they were eighth, though. They weren't bad last year. They were yeah. still damn good. But now they're number one. And for a lot of the season, they were number one with a wide margin between them and number yeah, two. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that – I mean, they have a lot of really good defensive players. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah, not right. just the Rudy Gobert Shit. show. It's Jaden McDaniels. It's Anthony Edwards. When he I wants think to he's like, Anthony Edwards deserves so much love. For sure. Yeah. I wish he could but it, it ain't the same without him. Oh, 100%. Without Rudy, you said? Yeah, yeah. 100%. No, yeah. And I think, honestly, what I've seen the most this year, because we already know about what he does at the rim – I've seen a lot of plays where he didn't switch out onto the perimeter and close it out. Mike, I've been saying this for years. Motherfucker saw two series of James Harden and tat 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 him oh, and decided that he too. can't guard in space. <laughs> like, he can, he can do that. Now, you don't want him guarding that player full time, but on switches, he's been able to do that for a very, very long time of his career. But y'all motherfuckers only watch playoff ball and determine your whole opinions about because a player that's because that's why that, that shit matter and where you can't take it. No, we don't even go down that road James right James Hart is the greatest ISO player no, in I'm the history of basketball. That. I'm not talking about that. It's been many times with it's... You talking with Terrence Mann? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Terrence that's, his assi- but we're that's, not going that's back a, here. That goes coaching too. Though. His we're assignment not- was not to guard Terrence Mann. Right. Yeah, he was that was his assignment. Team. Right. Teams still do that to this day. Most, y'all just don't. <laughs> people that still bring that up, just I'm telling y'all, are not really watching basketball. When you went to that Bulls game, the Bulls were literally just leaving Terrence Mann open. That's just the, when you're playing against a team that has that much talent, you have to pick your poison. Yeah. And it's just like when Grant Williams hit eight three pointers in that game seven a couple years ago. Yeah. You have to pick your poison. And what, what Quinn Snyder and them decided, Terrence Mann is a 36% three point shooter. They have Paul George over here. Let's focus on preventing Paul George from getting to the basket because I don't know if y'all remember, he was walking to the basket for seven games straight. Uh, uh, Let's just sit <laughs> where we want Rudy. anybody in this that you know remember, is who? <laughs> Big P. Come on, man. Big P. <laughs> <laughs> what the is that crazy? <laughs> that has to be crazy. Right? Is. That is crazy. Y'all know I'm a rap for Rudy. All I wanted him to say was shit. <laughs> right. He said Big P. <laughs> I'm a rap for Rudy, but this is just the way it is. But just like everything else, mm-hmm. that shit got attached to his name, KB. Yeah. <laughs> that shit got attached to his name, and it's okay. But yeah, they but people like Mike, when they making that case, they all gonna bring up Terrence, man. They all gonna bring us Harden. I'm on both sides. The playoffs are important and they do matter, but you are right. I'm I'm agreeing with both of y'all. The Harden one has more validity than the Terrence Man one because that's not his job the is only not re- to guard <laughs> Terrence Man. That was not but, his but, job. But the only Should've reason is some type of when you as elite of a defender, one of the greatest in this generation, uh-huh. once Terrence May get 27, you got to say, all right, that's enough. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's <laughs> what Quinn Snyder's got to say. I'm not helping that. no more. Yeah. That's it what Quinn Snyder's This, like this that, is the same conversation hey, we had with Pro-Am. When it be Pro-Am and a weak person be in that corner, 
What do we say after they hit the third or fourth three? All right, just guard him. Yeah. Just guard him at this point. Him. No it's, more it's, help. Hey, it's a lot and different. And Terrence Mann won all threes. No, for definitely. He definitely <laughs> went into Rudy's chest <laughs> yeah, yeah. a few times. Yeah. <laughs> I, I ain't say he was the perfect defender now. He definitely went into his chest a few times. I remember, I remember that. Like a few threes. Now they confidence going out. Now, now you got to do whatever. I remember that vividly. Yes. That was the I was in the airport watching it on my phone. Dis- oh, really? Disappointed. Really? I was coming back from a shoot in L.A. when I had called game. Oh, okay. Um, okay. It was I remember being midnight like, red eye in the basement. Like this is unfucking believable. Yeah, I was go. so pissed, bro. Because I not because I wasn't a jazz fan, but I knew what the conversation exactly, was about. Yeah. To go. When your favorite player is going through that shit and you seeing it, you already know. When Paul George hit the side of the rim, <laughs> I knew what was coming, man. I knew it. And that's the same thing. That's why I'm saying the Rudy shit. It just get attached. Mm-hmm. Is Paul George a great player? Yeah, but that side of the rim, even me as a fan, whenever I see another play- person do it, especially he, in the playoffs, he's the first person yeah. to come to my mind. And I think he did it again against the Lakers in the Staples Center that wasn't the playoffs. I think he hit the. Se- oh no 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 no. Who did it? We were watching the game. We were watching. They hit the side that. of the backboard really bad, Who and we were that? like, and we immediately thought of Paul George yes. when they did it. Was that the Heat seventy six er game? Maybe. Oh yes, I think it might have been. I forget who who took the shot. Either um, that or it might. It's have gonna been make that me mad because it was really off too. Yes. Yes. All right. Anyway, shout out to Rudy Gobert. Shout for out to Rudy. Away. Uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. Argue, Number two. Ar- argue with the others. Number two. I got Anthony Davis. I also have Anthony Davis. All right, Mr. Davis. It's me being different. I like it because this part of it don't matter, mm-hmm. and y'all know how I am when it comes to this. Victor Wimbiama. Okay, he's my oh, three. Okay. Yeah, I got Bam at three. Shout out to Big Bam. I'm not mad at the Wimby thing. Just um, because especially we talk about second, third, because again, yeah, yeah. it don't really matter. It don't matter. Um, he's gonna win seven of them in his career. Like that's what it feels like. Y'all know I prioritize defensive versatility. <laughs> yeah. And I love guards getting their credit. So that's what, and I'm he not a guard, but Herb Jones, I'm gonna give some some credit to just because I think this is become a big man in war, which I understand. Yeah. I but, think, uh, and I want to give Bam that love too, because again, I love defensive versatility. He's Bam another is, reason why the Heat need to have a serious season too, because until they had that serious season, he's not gonna get his DPOI. It's gonna be love. tough for him to have that yeah. case. Another guy like well, this. not tough because he has a case, but you get what I'm saying. Another guy is OG. Honestly, well, I feel like he played. Well, you play th- 30, thirty-two games. Thirty games. It's hard to. I feel like we take thirty-two sample size of a lot of people. They look like DPOI. Well, he more forty-three. I'm hating. I'm hating. I'm sorry. But, I, didn't, yeah. I don't. I'm not. No, I think he's exactly at forty-six. Forty-six. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I was looking don't. at it yesterday for like the awards, making sure he fit, and he didn't. You're doing a little research, a lot, a little, really. right. a lot of Nick players. <laughs> I want to say a lot, but Mitchell Robinson and OG are not gonna get a lot of defensive love. Hey, I said Hartenstein deserve. I said Hartenstein for sure. Yeah, shout out to the guy. I got him some love in another award. My melanated brother. I was at Hartenstein. I think Wimby, other than Jonathan Isaac, is like the most impactful defender in basketball. Thoughts, opinions. Bam. I'm not, I think you got to put Bam in that conversation. I, we, I, I have a good conversation about Bam later when we talk about all defensive teams. Um, but I, I bring it up now. Bam is the most versatile defender I think in the NBA. Oh, for sure. Uh, where I, I hate the idea of guarding one through five. Nobody's really expected to guard one through five other than like Alex Caruso kind of. Um, but he can. Yeah. Uh, switch, drop. He does everything you could possibly want from a, a five man. Actually, I would take that back. I think Draymond Green is the most versatile defender. You, I, what I have yeah. in my notes is people that qualified. Draymond Green would probably have this award if yeah. he hit the 65 games, yeah, but he, he want to hit people and stuff. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm not mad at the most impactful just because he has so much reach. I mean, I've seen him be in the pain to get blocks at the three-point line and then vice versa where he's chasing somebody down. And I'm, Vic it is you're talking about? Vic. Yeah. I'm talking about just – Put him on the floor, the defense and ceiling is probably going to raise up it just does. for him. They're, yeah. When he plays, they're like fourth best. Yeah, yeah. they're really good. When he so. not, fourth worse. <laughs> that discrepancy. <laughs> big, there's a big difference. Um, Anthony Davis is my number two, though. Oh, we got to get AD to love. Uh, shout out to AD. He, yeah. He's one of the best drop defenders in basketball. And he's also one of those dudes that fit that category of being extremely versatile. Mm-hmm. Now, he's not – so you're not gonna lock, he's not locking up ones obviously like most bigs are, but he's very good with his feet, mm-hmm. able to slide. You can put him on swallow him up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Corral him up. I guess he could do that. Uh, let's move over to six man of the year. Ah, this one I got Nas Reed. I'm disappointed in this award. Nas Reed won it for you. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Why? Y'all, you saw his re- the the thing at um, WrestleMania. Somebody yeah, had his towel flag. at WrestleMania. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, the towel. Yeah, yeah. Towel. I'm disappointed because I. I I just I've, I want more options in this. 
I, I just <laughs> feel like I want this award. This award has grew. When I was when I in the two thousands growing up, this award was cool. But this award and this generation, this award is. It's one of my. Fa- I love this award. This is a Passover. This used to be like, oh, Bobby Simmons won. Oh no, Bobby Simmons won most, most approved. approved yeah. Bobby Jackson won six minute play. Oh okay, this is one of those you just gloss over. I yeah. remember a kid running to see who won the awards at the ticker of the Bob. I don't even know if they had the press conferences back then. I know they started doing it, but you know when you hold the award and they ask you questions and photo the podium. I don't even know if six man had one of these when I was growing up. But for it to be the award it is now. When we had the Manus, the old. I was gonna say, shout Luz, out to the dude on your jersey dude, right now. Yeah, I just wanted to be a little bit more. It just felt like Malik Monk. You took Nasri. That surprised the hell of me. I thought he was gonna be consistent number two, but yeah, it's like though you got Norman Powell. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it should yeah. be seven guys every year that we just like, man, boom, boom, boom. Every team, when you look at, I need this. I need a guard. I need a wing. I need a big. You also, when building teams, you say, I need a six man. Yep. Needing a six man is a part of the team um, Cold, like it. setup. Yeah. The team building part of it. And the fact that we just have like a handful of guys who are good, good candidates, I just wanted to see more. When I got to the nitty gritty, it was like, ah, you know what I'm saying? And I know injuries and everything. And I feel like, you know, when you kind of look at it too, it usually be the same people, like every two three years or whatever just because like they're usually in that same role and they gonna probably come back and do the same thing next year for me like i still have malik monk i i think he'd probably honestly i keep thinking about what the conversation we had like a couple months ago we saw my malik monk and i was saying uh something about him like he uh he could hit another level and you were like man i kind of want to see him as a starter or maybe you said you didn't want to see him in a different type of light because maybe he would just be a little different than what we uh seen him used to in the six man i think what i said was I want to see him stay the six man because if he becomes a starter, yeah, his reputation drops. We mm-hmm. love him because of the six man shit. But if you put him as a starter, he's going to be like every team would then have a player like him. When mm-hmm. you make him the six man, he stands out because he's elite over there. You put him as a starter, who you taking him or Derek White? Derek White. Derek White is not even all star, so he just gets thrown into this pile of like really good. You know what I'm saying? Like a star. Yeah. star but when you make him the Making him the six man allows him to be elite. Yeah, I, I agree. See what you mean. That's I how. agree because a lot of times that that bench unit needs that playmaker or somebody who could at least create, get some good shots, or they're usually just there to complement the, uh, whatever you kind of need out of the starting lineup. And for at least Malik Monk, he's been legit like their second PG this this year for them in terms of creating, and he's been probably about as efficient too. So I, I love what Malik been doing. Yeah, and I love that down the stretch of games, him and De'Aaron Fox both could share the ball handling yep. ability. I think that just – when you had a dynamic backcourt that could do so many different things, and Malik is great off the ball, De'Aaron's solid off the ball, and they both attacking and coming downhill, making plays. Malik's also not afraid to take big shots. Malik got that I'm him type of mentality, so he's going – he's much willing to take those big shots down the stretch of games, which takes pressure off De'Aaron Fox. It just makes it all just so much easier for him. What I do love is that Nas Reed is in this conversation because yeah. I, because I'm a big fan of this award. This has been like a dominated guard award as yeah, a spark sure. score microwave guy off the bench. But over the years, we saw Mal- Malcolm Brogdon winning where he's he's he, he's a spark, but he's such a complete player off your bench that he just gave you an extra start off the bench. Um, Lamar Odom, when he won it, I thought gave a different look to it as a guy that can come in and do a lot of different things. Nas Reed fit that, and I want to see, I want to see that. I want to see yeah. more guys embrace that, and I want to see more people kind of go into it. It's not, it's not a negative thing. It's, no, it's, it's champion not. now. Like you know, I, I bet it's a lot of kids who favorite players are the six man because it's just a dope thing to have. And if more players buy into it with different play styles and we stop looking at it as just guys who can who average the most points off the bench i think this could become a really really fun and interesting award and you have a long career being a six man there is teams a, will always want the second unit to have that punch based on what you just said it would not be in the most points there was a um in time in iggy's career iggy's never got a six man a year award yeah. but he was by far the most impactful player off the bench with yeah. the Warriors. with the Warriors. Yeah. never had the counted stats um and i don't even know i'm gonna check right now if he ever finished even in like some of the top spots for yeah. um, six like man a, of the year. Another guy, Taj Gibson. Taj Gibson, when he was with the Bulls, he and was top, a very impactful. He didn't have a top man. three finish. I don't um, remember. Iggy's got two years of finishing a runner-up 
oh. for six minute year. Taj, Taj, Taj Gibson. I, I felt I like it was one year where Taj Gibson was extremely. I could be wrong, but I feel like he, he got a fifth place vote in okay. his third year. Okay. Um, one of my favorite bigs yeah. off the bench in that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The energy. And maybe it's because we are Chicagoans, and yeah. at that time, in my heart, even though I wasn't a quote unquote Bulls fan, I was rooting for them, and I watched so many of the games. They were fifty and sixteen that year. You could see his impact. Yes, you could you see can. the game change because Noah was still a high level yeah. guy, so he wasn't doing you know it wasn't like he was better than Noah, but he put a different feel and energy into the game from a different position. Tyus Jones, I would love to see oh, Tyus yeah. Jones if he's not going to be a starter. So we'll come in and get some six man year from being a good floor general off the off the bench. And mm-hmm. I think this is also a war where Jordan Poole can thrive. Jordan Poole, Jordan could. Poole, if he goes and if he gets on the right team, I don't know if it's the Wizards, but if he can get on the team, is willing to eat up that thirty million dollars and have him be a six man. <laughs> he could he That's could really definitely win this award multiple times. The best version of Jordan Poole that we're going to look back on, unless he gives us what we thought we were getting this year, next year. Will be the Warrior Six Man. Yes. Will be the Warrior Six Man. But yeah, I just think that there's a lot of talent who I look at with my basketball mind, and I think Six Man is not to discredit anybody, but it's just like that fits you. You'll do your Terry Ogier, Six Man. Usually, I know the Heat needs a lot scoring. of times those Six guys man. are closing the game out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not like they lose in minutes because they're just coming off the bench. Like those dudes still be getting twenty six to thirty minutes a night. You mentioned Tyus Jones. Here's a crazy stat. Or oh, I want y'all to guess it. In the last two seasons, Tyus Jones has played a little bit under four thousand minutes. Right in the last two seasons, one hundred and forty six games. How many fouls do you think he has in four thousand minutes? Four thousand. Fifty. It's eighty. Mm. Which is the lowest you'll get in a two he year span. So he don't turn thousand. the ball over. He, he does not he turn don't the ball foul. <laughs> He's only got 140 turnovers in 4,000 minutes. That's that's crazy. It's what you want that's as a point guard. Good, yeah. if he's not, the especially foul as a thing backup. is crazy to me. Yeah. yeah. So he's not putting people at the other line and he's not giving them opportunities to score and from turnovers. And it's crazy because he guards point guards while like attacking him continuously throughout the game. So I have not watched him enough this year. Is he Olaying anytime Dog, somebody... I ain't going to lie. Because if he just letting somebody go past, of oh, course you're not yeah, going to get no foul. <laughs> I, can't, I can't call it. I can't call it. Um, a guy that should be getting a lot of love for this, but he won't because his team is not winning. Uh, Bogey Bogdanovich, I think, is yeah, the yeah. most impactful off-the-bench player in the league. Yeah, when when they were not super, super bad, they was bad, but it was like a still a little bit of hope left. He was like yes. in, the, in the running, yeah. and yeah. then they started to he lose. Was. I mean, if you care about advanced stats... Uh, usually a six man of the year guy is not a dude that's going to have um, a high on off because a lot of the times he's either running with the second unit. He's this he's this facilitator. He's the guy. Bogey's team is like seven points better when he's on the court as a six man, which is just rare. Yeah. Yes. Um, and the that's team's dope. bad, too. So it's like <laughs> shout out to Bogey, but he's not going to win. I also have Malik Monk. I don't know if I said that. Earlier. Yeah. Do y'all think Benedict Matherin? stays as a six man or he's eventually it looks like he's going to be the starting two for the Pacers I think think, for me personally I think it's just too early to tell right now I want to give it a like a year or two more to see if he can solidify himself as a starter but if you don't really see it and he looks like he's just a dude that you want to come in and just be your offensive punch I could see that he also started to defend a lot better as the season went on which is a big thing obviously they're starting some better defenders and like and Nee Smith and and Nimhart um and that's why they've been a better defensive team recently. But he was starting to really put it together as like a help defender, which was interesting. And mm-hmm. I think that might be the next thing to determine whether or not he's going to be a full-time starter or not. I was thinking the same thing. Like, if he was just going to – obviously, he could light it up. If that's going to be the main thing he brings, then maybe he is a six-man. But if he well, if he rounds it out a little bit more, I don't see no problem why he can't be a starter. Jaden Ivey, starter or six-man? On the Pistons? I would On starter. the Pistons, he's a starter. Yeah. I was actually thinking the other way around, um, that he might be a six man on the Pistons. Oh. And if he goes elsewhere, he might be able to be a starter. This is FK Cunningham. They have a star Thompson. They have Duran. They have Ivy. They have another lottery pick coming up. So I am intrigued with him as a six man. No, again, yeah, it's not people that watch, this is not, I just talked about how much I love this award and how much, it, how far it has come since I was a kid um, growing up looking at all of the awards being won. Me and, I, I don't remember as a kid, as, as kids talking about this award. Me, you, Sean, and Bud. Mm-mm. Hey, man, who y'all think gonna be the six? Who y'all <laughs> think gonna be the six man? Oh no, I'm picking the Bulls because they got Jamal Crawford off the bench. This, that shit. Yeah, the now man. you looking at shit like man, you know, like like. So I mean, we, he fits. He fits the like the certain like he fits the the, the personnel or yeah. the mold of a six man that. Kind of like strong combo guard that can play, make a little bit, create, 
do a little bit of all of that. So he kind of fits. I had Nasri two and then Norman Powell three. Same. That was shout out Norman Powell, bro. Yeah. yeah, he's been great. I love Nasri just because he plays. He's playing in a position that's loaded with Cat yeah. and Rudy Gobert, mm-hmm. and he still stands out as like a guy that has to be on the court. And he's so versatile that he can play with both of them. Mm-hmm. And like it's not a drop on the team. And his ability to shoot the three ball. If you put five threes a game, forty two percent. And if you put a big on him, he has the ball handling skills to get by him, and he has the footwork to post up on wings. If you put a wing, he. His skill set is phenomenal when you talk about the offensive side of the ball. He, he can just do so much for you. We got a good let Isaiah Joe, too. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Isaiah Joe. Yeah. He was a candidate for one of the fake awards I came up with. So shout out <laughs> to Isaiah Joe. Uh, let's move on to Coach of the Year. I actually think this year is a lot of candidates. You might see a lot of it different is. answers. Where did y'all go? Mine, they know. They know. They know. Is one as well. Okay, so consensus. Damn, I thought somebody <laughs> was going to have somebody else. I think one. he's the cl- that's the easy one, but I do yeah. think there's a lot of names mm-hmm. you could throw here for some love and some flowers. A lot of people went through a lot of different things. Yeah. My number two is uh, mostly. Same. It's hard Jamal not to Mosley. have them if they're yes. going to be the three seed and sure. with the expectations they had and how they exceeded those things. He helped build a culture where like, they have people on their team that could not care less about their body. They want to get that stop. Mm-hmm. Jalen Suggs will jump and land on his head if that means that you're gonna miss a shot. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> like that's kind of crazy. Um, I don't, I didn't watch college basketball, so I couldn't tell you what the profile was for Paolo Bencaro defensively. But Paolo Bencaro, typically, when you think about these younger players coming to the league and being the guy, it's kind of hard to convince those dudes to defend. Not with Paolo Bencaro. Franz Wagner has arms out of this world, and he's using those arms out of this world. You come off the bench, you got Goga Batazzi. We ain't never seen Goga Batazzi look like a defensive player. Never. There was a game early in the season where Wendell like was NBA on. player. <laughs> Facts prior to that. He had like three steals and three blocks in the half. And I'm watching this game like, this is the same one that was on the Pacers last year? Like, that's crazy. A lottery crazy. pick for the Pacers. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, yeah. <laughs> So shout out to, to Jamal. John, shout out to the scouting. Let's give some scouts some play. You say you don't watch college basketball. I, obviously, I watch. But a lot of the scouting profiles had this all similar feedback on Paolo where projects to be a good defender in the NBA. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people project but never actually do it. Boom. Um, so shout out to Paolo. All the tools and everything projects to be, but, you know. Guys come in and be like, no, nah, I like to score. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All the tools is funny, though. That just means that he's athletic. <laughs> <laughs> but he do got the tools. He got, he's strong. Yeah, he yeah. got the prototypical height. Uh, he can sit down. He, he ain't the fastest, seat. but he, he can, should be able to move it enough for the players you're going to have him uh, guarding. Should be able to rebound and close out possessions. 6'10". Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he's a lot bigger than people expect. We seen him in person at yes. summer league, and I'm like, bro, he no. looked he damn near like seven he foot. <laughs> he posting up the, net, the he posting up the guy that he posting up look like he three four inches. <laughs> I don't know than people him. always say that because the NBA, but we see a lot of NBA in person. And what you say about Brandon Ingram? Oh, he ain't feel that big. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't feel that big is crazy because he was touching. Him. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. But no, Siakam. We walk past Siakam, Siakam is. Tallest. Yeah, damn. he looked taller than like <laughs> six, eight, six, nine, or whatever they got him listed at. We should do an all time lying about their heights thing. Like KG's the, the captain, obviously. Yeah. He he per, he told people, I was telling people I was uh, six nine because I want them to see me and me seven foot and be skater. <laughs> you know? Kevin Durant is uh, six Perkins nine. Also, Kevin Durant, I thought come on. Kevin Durant ain't no six taller, nine. But he was he, he was small. He, yeah, yeah, he, he like small. a good six, 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 seven. Yeah. Man, he was small. Yeah. But also, he's a little older. You know, those knees don't got the buoyancy anymore. So he might have been taller in his heyday. I'll give him 6'9". Six 6'9". Nine. Six nine. Well, no, he said it himself. He was like, I was an undersized center. Yeah. yeah. And But, like, on the court. Never in my mind look, He didn't I look like an undersized, undersized center. Maybe Never. Just, maybe just because he, he was. Jalen Brunson is dead ass six foot even. Oh, you saw him at all. I we met him. Oh, yeah. Shook his hit. hand. And y'all eye to eye? I feel like I look higher to talk to y'all than I did to him. And Damn. I think he's listed at 6'2", so maybe yeah, an inch yeah, too yeah, shorter yeah. than y'all. But Damn. real life, like we got a picture next to each other. It's like me standing next to Mike. <laughs> and he <laughs> averaging 28 points per buckets. game right now. It's like, that. Yeah, I'll be posting up everybody. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wearing rings and shit <laughs> on his index finger. <laughs> My, I love me some Jalen Brunson, boy. Same. Did My you boy say just, Trey Young was like your height too? Yes, Trey well, Young was. smaller than Jalen Brunson. J- yes, and J- yeah. Trey Young, me and him looked at each other eye to eye. What's up, bro? Like, I don't know. It's crazy. That's, I'm exaggerating. But he's definitely <laughs> – uh, you have to admire his game more because yes. he is – not only is he short, he's skin, skinny too. Yes, like at least Jalen Brunson got some yeah, girth does. to him. Uh, Trey Young don't got that. Yeah. It's like he's taking contact from some of the taller people and still finishing through that. It's ridiculous. Shout out to Trey Young. I guess he's coming back. Yes. 
clear to play. The Bulls might win an in-season tournament game if both of them, DeJounte and Trey Young, are playing. <laughs> uh, who who do you have your second? You got Jamal Mosley second? Mm-hmm. You too, Derek? Uh, no. But coach of the year, I had Chris Finch. Okay. Not mad at that. He's my three. He's my yeah. three. He's I had three. Eme at three. I know they're not going to make it. No, but like, Eme deserves love. What, what Eme has done for that team this year has been phenomenal. That He came in with a team that the year before that didn't look too hot, didn't mm-hmm. even know the direction. And they came out this year, and he put the ball in Shingun's hand, let him run, facilitate the offense, and run it through him, made him the engine. Jalen Green has taken a leap this since All Star break. I don't know if that's well. Jalen Green March. credit is because <laughs> he just he's about to have a son or a daughter, whatever. He's about to have a baby. <laughs> right. um, we know the truth. <laughs> but he may definitely instill the culture over there that you could definitely see and like feel, and it's a completely different team now. The Rockets are back on a five game losing streak. Not not yeah. not discrediting the yeah, yeah. at all because I love what you just said. But it's but it just happened that. so fast. They yeah. were yeah. eleven streak and now it's five in a row. To that Mavericks so one was crazy. Yes, they were up twenty for like well at least it felt like the whole half until I, the end, uh, basically the I, end of it. I turned it off and came back with like six minutes left. Like hold on, is this a game? What the yeah. hell? Um, also. Joe Mazzulla deserves some type I of I would say Joe, 60 I know he's wins. got a bunch of talent and everything, yeah. but 60-plus wins and, like, the fourth best net rating in the history of yeah. basketball, he has to get some love. Like, he's not top three to me, but he's going to get some You know the thing about them five games, too? Mm-hmm. Jalen Green, 5 of 15. Mm-hmm. Jalen Green, 10 of 22. <sighs> Jalen Green, 4 of 12. <sighs> Jalen Green, 6 of 18. Damn. Jalen Green, 6 of 15. Damn. Two of seven from three, two and a half from three, three of eight from bro, three, I, 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 two of eleven. I, I, bro, so I want to get into these awards. I, that has to go with one of my awards that I have. These fake awards. Should I just bring it out now? Save sure. them. Let's save them. All oh, save them. Okay, save it. All right. Um, any other people that deserve some some love for Coach of the Year? It's hard to say. Tom Thibodeau. All the oh, injuries yeah. we endured. I'm not trying to hit shit. Yeah, I'm not mad. Just at that. love. He's not going to win that yeah. award. Just love. Uh, uh, also, I'll, Coach Michael Malone. Some love. Uh, eventually, we're going to start giving our best Joe coaches Mazzula. the actual reward. Um, but anyway, moving on to the next award, most improved player. Uh, Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. And then uh, for me at number two, I had Kobe White and then J-Dub. I had J-Dub at two. I got Maxey at one. I got Kobe White. This is where Kobe I was saying. Kobe fell off, unfortunately. Streaky guy. When you t- He's not going to win it, but Flowers' perspective. I am giving a lot of flowers to Isaiah Hardenstein when you talk about most improved. Mm. He had a career year, and he solidified himself as a center. He is on, a starting center. He's only 25. I know for whatever – maybe it's just me. Whenever I think about Isaiah Hardenstein, he gives me 28, 29. Yeah, 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 for real. He's only 25. He's been around for a long time, yeah. I feel like. Yes, already. So He was a backup to Jokic. Imagine if they still had Isaiah yeah, Hardenstein. On the Nuggets. Wow. Clippers. On that Rockets team of Harden. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. He's been around, ain't he? But now he's New York, and I can't imagine him anywhere else. I'm yeah. scared. I think a team like Philadelphia could come in with their money. B-Ball Paul got that locked up. He, I, hope, I hope so. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I, I want to keep the dude. But He'll I, look good in uh, – Lord Isaiah Hardenstein. Oh, what jersey? Memphis. That's what I'm saying. He'll I can, look good in Memphis. Mm, don't, that don't put that in the air. He'll Claxton look. got that, that cap But then space. New York now need, the Brooklyn now needs a center. No, Noah Clown, you got that, baby. He had a good game the other night. Box score watching. <laughs> I'll, br- I'll, I'll, I'll bring him up again in this episode. But Yeah, yeah. M- most approved players, Tyrese Maxey. I have Kobe White, too. And I got uh, Jonathan Kaminga, three. Jonathan Kaminga deserves yeah. some love. Kaminga definitely deserves some love. Especially after having to like, pretty much beg for minutes mm-hmm. and eventually got him. Demand minutes. The yeah. last month, like I wanted to let my bias win this award and put Kobe White one. But the last month, he's definitely – he's streak, He's always been a streaky guy. Yeah. His last month last month has been tough uh, because I think one of the harder things to do in basketball is to go from not even a starter to like, oh, building block type yeah. thing. And I think Kobe White is teetering those waters. But he um, also had that pretty – it looked gruesome, like hip injury when he yeah, failed. Yeah, but he, he was struggling before that he fell in that um, – is that the Bucks? Is that the Pacers? It's the Pacers game. Yeah, yeah. Pascal uh, Siakam. Siakam tried to chase him down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he was struggling before then. But he did enough for me to put him at number two. Maybe next year when he becomes an all-star, he'll win this award. All-NBA. Did you give yours? Uh, oh, we don't forget about the clutch player. Yeah, baby, we still got – that's a real award. I had Tyrese Maxey okay. as my guy. Uh, I know another guy we didn't really mention, um, Jalen Johnson, to me, I think also with the Hawks. I felt like he went from, like, a player that, like, you were you knew about, 
but you didn't know he was going to be as much of a staple as he was this season. They honestly looked like a, a way better team when he was on the floor. He would be second on my ballot if he hit the game's criteria. Yeah. But unfortunately, he Who? didn't play though. Jalen Johnson. Johnson. He didn't play those oh, six. How many games was he off? Uh, more than, um, more than yeah, yeah, like 40s. I think yeah. he's in the 40s, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Got have Might be 42. Yeah. But yeah, he would have been in there for sure. Clutch player of the year. I don't got my three. I'll be forgetting about this award. I'm a <laughs> you know, it's funny. We fool. did this at the halfway mark at like All Star break. And you forgot it? We didn't. We none of us brought the clutch uh, player of the year. Because it's such I had a it on my thing. But I was like, we award. didn't do it. So I just, we just if kept going. If Fox was the runaway and that's what made sense to us last year. Yes. I, actually, I saw somebody um, on Twitter say, obviously, a lot of these awards are numbers based, but yeah. this one is more numbers based than all of them. So let's just give it away like the other, like the, we have like Hustle Player of the Year where they literally say this guy got X amount of steals, this amount of loose balls. Class Player of the Year, let's just look at the numbers. Yeah. And give it to DeMar DeRozan. Because <laughs> that's who's... Or Steph Curry. DeMar DeRozan's numbers are better than Steph Curry. <laughs> but I ain't mad at him winning the award either. Hey, I, I honestly, oh, I don't, he can he have it. it. How many years? He could have it. How, oh, oh, okay. I thought you meant you didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I was going to say, how many years until it becomes like a thing that people care? Do pe you think people are ever going to care about the Clutch Player of the Year Award? It's mm, a cool award. That's cool, but, but nah. I mean, I guess it depends. We would need on. a year of all. It, it's so hard because it's not an even playing field. If you play more Clutch Minutes than me, then you're probably going to have more Clutch opportunities than me. If I'm on the, the Celtics, they'll be handling business. Mm -hmm. And then that makes it not interesting. And that's why Demar is the winner because we've played the most clutch games of basketball, and he's got some game winners. He's got. It's kind of crazy that we are, but we still suck. Yeah, that means that we're in games, just can't close them out. Are no, not... it's the other way around. It's if we're in the game, we're gonna win. If we're not in the game, we're not blowing you teams out. We're awesome. getting our ass spanked. Mm -hmm. um, unless it's the um, the Pacers for whatever reason, the Bulls play the Pacers very well when they blow them out every time. <laughs> Don't make sense to me. But love to see them on the schedule this season. Uh, my number two is actually Steph Curry. As you mentioned, and yeah. my number three is Kyrie Irving. I like that. That would have been my winner, Kyrie. Kyrie. My thing is, is, I love that, that guy. Isn't that basically? Well, I don't know tomorrow because I know De'Aaron Fox was there too. But it's like it's gonna be the same people every year. I feel like it's gonna be the Mars, the Kyrie. Well, it depend on the team you yeah. on. I think next year, I mean, maybe Jalen Brunson's in there. Yeah, I would be. Yeah. I was in conversations last year. year. As long as we in close games, but let's hope not. Let's yeah. handle business. That's true. Let's get to the all teams. Starting off with all NBA, was this really difficult for y'all? The first no. team was relatively. The easy. first team is set, right? Yes. Yep. It is going to be Jokic. Yep. Luca. Yep. Shea. Yep. Giannis. Yep. Tatum. Yep. yep. Okay. No conversation for Kevin Durant being on first no. team. No, okay. That's cool. Not. Second team, y'all tell me what y'all. Y'all, if you got something that's different, just say stop. Okay? okay. Remember, this is positionless. Start going, going, going like a starting five. I know okay. it's Bronson. Yes. yes. Edwards. Yes. Yep. David. I'm. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Kevin Durant, yes. Mm -hmm. Kawhi, yes. no, 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 no. Oh, talk to me. Who y'all got for LeBron that? LeBron James. I have LeBron Halliburton. James. You have Halliburton on second team. Yeah. Okay. Talk, talk to me through this because I have Davis as that last. I have spot, Davis on here as well. Um, over Braun. I wanted to put Davis. Team. He's on my third. I had to give Sabonis some love. I had to. I put I put Andy Davis on second team because I thought he had a better season than LeBron. Andy that's Davis. That's how I feel too. Yeah. That's that's kind of why. I but feel talk that to way. me. You said Halliburton. Talk yeah. to me. What, what does I anybody mean, else got Halliburton second? He didn't make my list at all. He didn't make no, my I list didn't at make all. Mine. Um, oh. I think the last couple months have really. Shut I mean, it has, shut but down. like Halliburton throughout the course of the season, like majority of the season, he's been playing at all NBA level. Um, he was a big engine to one of the greatest offenses of all time, and um, at least that's, if that's for that thirty game stretch. Yeah, that's pretty much why I had him here. I thought his season was so damn good, but like the last two months, yeah, he has struggled. Okay. I'm not mad at it. Shout out to our guy Halley. He just I don't think he did enough for me personally to make it this year. Um, especially when you look at again, the, the season is what, from October to April. So October, yeah. November, December, January, February, March, April. It's a seven month season. And I just think that some of these months, the last two to three, may have been a determining factor, considering there's so many candidates. Where like his foot got off the gas. And I think a lot of that's because of the quad injury. Like yeah. we can't look past that. But like last month, he averaged sixteen and nine on forty three twenty seven. That's just not all NBA for me personally. Um, but shout out to our guy. Shout out to our guy. I hope he gets it because that means he got like forty extra million dollars coming his way in incentives yeah. and stuff. But um, for my ballot, he's just not there. So who who did you have for a second team? Yeah, because I had Kawhi. Had... Y'all, did they, all y'all stop me at Kawhi? I did. Yeah. Okay. So I had Brunson, Edwards, Durant, LeBron, and Davis, and then. That's why I have for second team. I don't know if y'all want me to go down to third no, team. No, no, no. Well. Stay, stay there. What about you, Pierre, on second team? Jalen Brunson, Anthony Edwards, Kevin Durant, LeBron, Sabonis. 
Okay. Um, what would have been the determinant factor for Sabonis getting second team for you over, I guess? I just love this, the year that Sabonis had, and I feel like, but part of me, because he wasn't an all-star, I just felt very necessary to give him as much praise to kind of make up for that. And I also wanted to give the Kings somebody. Um, I, li I like the season that they had. The Lakers also, for me, I'm not giving them two uh, all-NBA second team guys. I'm yeah. not. I'm That's not. fair enough. Personally, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I feel like I'm not mad at the Sabonis one because although it wasn't the same year as last year, I felt like Sabonis had that that impact that kind of De'Aaron Fox had brought last year in terms of like he was the driving engine. De'Aaron Fox, he's still really – De'Aaron Fox still been killing. For sure. But it's just – it seemed like it's not – the same as last year as he was like last year he was taking over everything but Sabonis has really been a complimentary piece it's like we got two legit you know 1A guys Sabonis also did some shit that like with those double doubles yeah. the only other people that did them in history of the NBA are, are Hall of Famers yeah like literally some shit that like when you think about the players that are in our league like the Jokic's and the Embiid's he did some shit that they don't, they haven't even done. His mm -hmm. name is in there with the Kim Elijah, Juan Moses Malone of the world, as far as seventy plus double doubles in a season. So, yeah, give me, give me some bonus. And then the people who didn't make, who I put over him over, they're just right on number three. So then mm -hmm. you know, it's it's cool to see how uh, how far he's come from too. Because I remember him obviously when he went to that uh, in the Paul George trade when he went to the to the Thunder. I never thought he would be this type of player that we see now. So. No, no, no. In a Paul George trade, he went to the Pacers. Oh, well, when he was before the before the trade he on the Thunder, the I didn't never think he would be yeah, playing like this. Because he was kind of like a pick and pop yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know yeah. what. I didn't really know how to gauge him. Yeah. So I never thought he would be. He a, played like this yeah. at Gonzaga. So when it's he so became weird. a pick and pop, I was like, what the? F to look at those highlights from that season, Vo was all chubby. With a <laughs> Sabonis is small. It's just it's a weird timeline that you forgot they kind of played together on an, with an oh, MVP. Yeah. And we was like, man, Russ got no help. And at that time, V.O. was the player we saw eventually, and Sabonis mm -hmm. obviously wasn't that player. Then either. they went to the Pacers and they got snapped. And Russell yeah. was like... <laughs> 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 uh, okay, somebody throw out their third team. Steph Curry. Okay. Devin Booker. Yep. 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 Kawhi Leonard. Yep. Okay. Zion Williamson. Mm -hmm. Anthony Davis. I had Sabonis and LeBron on my third team. So you had Steph... Oh, it's Reed Joyce. Steph, Book, Kawhi, Sabonis, LeBron. Sabonis, LeBron. Okay. What about you? I had Steph, Book, Zion, Kawhi, and Sabonis. Okay. So we all basically had the same. I have an outlier this. then. Rudy Who Gobert. is it? No, hell no. Oh. Um, I got Bron on my third team. Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Demonte Sabonis, Jalen Brown. Oh wow! No, I'm not mad at that. I got Jalen Brown's the, at their they spot. They're the best team in the league by but far. It, it's not so even like, just. It's that's part of it, but yeah, it's yeah. not just that. I feel like this is the best defensive season of Jalen Brown's career. Oh, on sure. top of that. Um, it's not his most statistical season because, yeah. I mean, they added so many talented pieces. Shots Nobody's go numbers down. are going to stay the same except for the top guy. Uh, but I thought he was as impactful this season as his last All-NBA season, which was yeah. last year. Um, I also thought about Zion for the spot. I did consider Halley. I did consider Wimbanyama, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's just a little bit too early for that one, personally. I think that because of games played, 65-game threshold shrunk the pool so much. Yeah. I do love the fact that now that um, Jalen Brown, coaching staff is putting him on the other team's best guards a, a lot of times to start games. Um, and you wouldn't really want to expect that when they have Derek White and Drew Holiday. You would have thought that they would they brought them in mm -hmm. so that Brown wouldn't have to take those assignments. But they like, no, you're talented just like Derek White and Drew Holiday to where we're going to put you on Steph to start the game. Mm -hmm. And like I think that's that right there shows you that even the coaching staff knows that he's taking his leap defensively. Shout out to that threshold, though. Without that threshold, and be take somebody's spot yeah yeah um somebody else would I'm, I'm gonna give you the list of people that didn't hit the thresholds in a second as i love it donovan mitchell, donovan donovan mitchell. mitchell. Yep, um, that's a huge one because donovan even though again recently he hasn't been amazing that's a guy that would have been on this list for sure uh so people that missed missed the threshold um that matter donovan mitchell for sure Devin booker technically isn't there he'll but play. he'll he played yeah. one more game uh jimmy butler i don't know if he would have been on these teams kyrie and Kyrie Irving would have been on the team. For Larry Market and uh, Tyrese Max is a guy that hit the threshold, didn't make any of our lists, which is fine. Uh, Lamelo Ball, obviously. Yeah. Jamal Murray didn't hit the threshold, and that's kind of it. Yeah, that's kind of it. There's only really Carthony Towns. Oh, Cat. Yeah, is a guy. Cat yeah. would have got some consideration. It would have been depending on how he was playing to end up to up to the situation. Scotty Barnes, Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle, Julius Randle, oh, yeah, Julius. Yeah. Huh? It's all All NBA teams. Let's go to uh, John Morant. 
let's go Morant, to for sure. <laughs> all rookies. All defense. What happened to all defense? Oh, we can go all defense. Yeah, all, all defense. defense come before. The rookies is the last all, all Oh, that's defense. the one y'all don't care about? Uh, okay, all defensive teams is also not positions. I don't know if yeah. y'all did positions. Nope. It's also not I positions. I did the best defenders. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, consensus, Rudy Gobert, we all had him as a DPOY. Yes. Consensus, Anthony Davis, we yes. all had him in our top three. Consensus, Wimbyama? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I have Wimby on another team. I have him on the second oh, team. Okay, so who takes that spot for you? Um, on my first team, I have Derek White, Caruso, Herb Jones, Damn. Rudy, and Anthony Davis. Damn. I'm not mad at that. Say it one more time for me. Derek White, Caruso, Herb Jones, Rudy Gobert, and Anthony Davis. I'm not mad at that at all. I to get, move Wimby over to the second team in honor of one of those guards, I'm not mad man, at that I'm at all. I'm putting Wimby over them guards. I'm I'm not mad at it, but I'm putting Caruso ain't making no all defensive over Wimby. I'm sorry. Yeah, <sighs> in my first team, I had Vic, um, Gobert, and Davis, White, and then I also had Suggs. I had four I bigs. Suggs. I had Rudy, Bam, AD, Wimby, and Herb Jones. Second team, I had Suggs, Caruso, Kawhi, Shea, McDaniels. No Derek White? No Derek White. <sighs> no Derek White. All right, my defensive team is uh, the top three bigs we talked about, Herb Jones and Derek White. Um, those two are – this didn't end up being like a guard thing, but it kind of did. Guards yeah. and forwards just kind of went perfectly. I, I don't know. Somehow I actually made my list the same way. I, I, I didn't make – I <laughs> made it. I made it like with two guards, a wing. And yeah, two it's, not, it's not the way it was supposed to go, okay. but that's like the way I, it ended. I like consciously made it that way, okay. and I realized that makes more sense. Okay, okay. <laughs> My second team has Bam Adebayo. Um, uh oh, I got a typo here. I have Herb Jones twice. He's on both teams. He's that damn good, I guess. <laughs> um, so I guess I have an open spot. I have Bam Adebayo, Alice Caruso, Jalen Suggs, um, uh, Jared Allen, and now that I got open spot, what about Chet? Jaden McDaniels might get oh. that spot. Somebody help me out. You know what I was Somebody at help me fill Jayden his last McDaniels. spot. Jaden McDaniels. It's, pro- it's, it's probably going to be Jaden. I I wish Anthony Edwards could get some more loves in these type because he could fit it, but he just got so – the I've other defenders on, on his team are so damn good. It's hard good. to make this 10 people. It yeah. It could easily be a third. So A third team would be cool. I would yeah. love to have a third team. That would give me an opportunity to show some love to – Ah. Now this is where Jonathan Isaac game plays. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, right. If if he had the games if, play, I don't care if it was seventeen minutes per. God damn it, he's a first teamer. He plays so damn hard. <laughs> oh. Give me, give me your full ten again, Mike. I have. Hold on, I just lost it. I had Derek White, Jalen Suggs, Anthony Davis, Victor, and Rudy Gobert. Second team, I had Caruso, Herb, Bam, Chet, and I also had OG on there, but he can't make it. He didn't miss. So I've, I'm missing one too. Okay. Okay. What about you, Pete? Give your 10 one Actually, more time. Actually, I, I can slide Jade in there. Rudy, Bam, AD, Wimby, Herb, Suggs, Caruso, Kawhi, Shea, Jaden McDaniels. Ooh, I love Shea on that team. Yeah. What about you, uh, Derek? My second team was Drew Holiday. I think he's a different one than what y'all have uh, said. Oh, okay. I got Jalen Suggs, Jaden McDaniels, Bam, and Victor with me up. Okay. So we got, out of the 10 people, we kind of got like 12, 13 different people in the pool. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Rookie teams. Wimby, uh, Chet, Brandon Miller, AirPods, Hami Hotcast. Ooh, I, I got four Derek out of the five. I got Derek Lively. It's my fifth over Hami. Yeah. He made my second team, which is Asar, a man, Casey and Wallace, Lively, and Bilal. <laughs> Shout out to Bilal. You ain't got no love for Gigi? <laughs> I had the same it, team as well, Gigi. Gigi didn't play enough games. No, this is the one one thing that the games don't matter. His, sh- okay. his shit came in sparks. I would, I would love to give Gigi some love, but Spent that game against the Warriors. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like saw Gigi a TikTok came in the middle of the year and just kind of. I saw a TikTok of like I guess there's a dude that sits courtside at the Grizzlies games every game, and he always talking to the fa- the, the players as they sit in the corner. Yeah. He say to Gigi, y'all got to turn up. Gigi look back and say, if they give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Some dude told, um, I don't know if this is the same game, but somebody told Dante to tuck in his jersey. That was No, that was a Bulls game. He did that to so- oh, somebody Bulls here. Bulls Knicks, yeah. Yeah. He was mad because we was busting their ass. <laughs> <laughs> we play again tonight, though. Easy oh, yeah, because you said they played three times. Yeah, like, then the last day of the season we play again. Easy does. Yes. Makes no sense. Our last four games, the Bulls twice, Brooklyn, and I think – Oh, no. We beat Milwaukee, so. Yes, you did. Uh, my second team, for what it's worth, is Jaime Hakez, Asar Thompson, Kaysen Wallace, Gigi, and Amen. Yeah. I got Brandon Pazemski, Kaysen Wallace, Keontae George, Amen, and Asar. Can I ask you a question? Do you, do you have Keontae? He was second team for me. That was my second team. 
Can I ask you, and, and, and I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer here, what is the determining fact to put him over Scoo Henderson? Uh, I think. Because uh, their stat, as I was looking at this yesterday, their stats are damn near identical. So y'all didn't have Case and Wallace? No, I stayed Case and Wallace. Oh. Um, you had Case and Wallace? Mm -hmm. Their stats are almost identical. The only <laughs> yeah. problem, only you difference. You sleep over that bat. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's tripping me out. Is he is he here? Like you, no? Yeah, you're trying to see if he's actually been. Yeah, yeah like who is he looking shade? at? Like what is happening? <laughs> That's um, why I love having sunglasses on. Because you don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, you a freak. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Like, I'm just sitting here. Like, you don't know if I'm... Like, I could be, I could be like, taking a nap or something. Like, I could just be chilling. Like, you don't know what... We gonna know if you're taking a nap because we're here. You don't know what I'm doing is a wild ball. Like, like, you don't I know what so I'm looking at? I feel incognito when I have on sunglasses. He's talking about she not gonna know I'm looking at her, her, <laughs> her rear end, but it's the whole head uh, turn. She just right. can't see the eyes. I'm having a conversation. I'm just looking... I'm, I'm, I'm looking at her other set of eyes. Y'all crazy. <laughs> I just feel like when you have on sunglasses, it just makes you somewhat like invisible. I promise you we see okay. all Okay, <laughs> Okay, big daddy. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, he said he put the sunglasses on. Now they can't see you no more. <laughs> Back to the question. Keontae over Scoop. I mean, I don't really have a definitive <laughs> argument for it. Um, I just feel like Keontae's highlights have been better than Scoot's. <laughs> That's, that, that might be the only reason. I don't really have an argument for it. Okay. Highlight moments? No, no. like, games. And I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just Because I, mean. I was, again, yeah, yeah. comparing When you say highlights, to, I feel like you went to YouTube. Oh. <laughs> it was like, I'm getting more excited watching his mix. I think Mark, but, part of it is probably the expectation behind the two. Yeah, Scoop being true. a top three pick and putting up the season that he had versus Keontae being wherever he was drafted late um, first round or whatever. Um, Scoot's also had two of the worst negative plus minuses of all time. Yeah, that probably plays a factor. But I was just curious. That's all. Because I, yeah. I was trying to determine between them and Gigi, who I gave the nod to in his 42 games or so. Um, should I put Scoot? Should I put Keontae? I'll should I put Gigi? Scoot, but I, I just I decided to ride with Keontae. Okay, shout out to Keontae. That's the boy. All right. That is made up awards. Every single real award. Let's get to the fun stuff, baby. The made That's up what I've been awards. For. So every award that I made, I also give y'all an example okay. of, of to really. This first award is called Dykemo. Okay. Okay. Dykemo stands for Damn, You Changed My Opinion. Ooh. <laughs> An example. Okay. Jalen Suggs. Right, yeah. It's a good one. Who is y'all Dykemo That's award a winner? Good you changed one. my this opinion. This uh, season, they changed your opinion. Hmm. Can I That's go with the homer one. pick with D Lo? Yes. I think I was on the I was on board with trading him and like obviously the la uh last playoffs. Kind of got played off the court, but this season I don't think I, you know, I'm right back on the D Lo uh, hype train. So I think I could say I, I kind of changed my opinion about him for sure. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Um, for me, goof, that's tough, bro. Because a lot of people that stood out, like I didn't have a Dante DiVincenzo opinion before this year. You know what I'm saying? Like he fits because he went from a guy that just existed to me to like, damn, we can't leave him open at all. Uh, also, Grayson Allen also fits that as well. Yeah. Oh, you, you mm. A guy, I think D'Angelo Russell's like the consensus guy. Like, uh, he takes 100% of the vote. But for the sake of the conversation, I guess I'll throw in a guy like Aaron Neesmith. Yep. Another dude that I, I didn't have an opinion on going into mm. the season. And now it's like, damn, he's super impactful on a lot of different fronts. But I don't know if there's a single player that went from mm, I'm lukewarm about him to oh my god I was you know. Well yeah. Not that I was lukewarm, but Kobe White would fit that for me because y'all know I like historically that. I thought he was like a six man guy. Mm -hmm. well, now he is a legitimate starting guard and one of the key figures of the Bulls' future. So it don't have to be I was necessarily out on this dude. But right. yeah, yeah. even if you like oh he's a cool player, you might be like oh shit like oh no he one of them for me. I like that. I like that. Derek, give us one of your fake awards. Uh, I got the All Heart Award. Ooh. These are guys that just come out and just they just leave it all out on the court. Josh yeah. Hart wins that. <laughs> no, I didn't put him on there. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, his teammate. Okay. Isaiah Hartenstein comes out there, plays with a number hard. He's the reason why they're one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league. And he's he's a big anchor of that. Also, I have Alex Caruso because mm -hmm. he literally just plays at 100 for his spurts that he's out on the court. And same with Jonathan Isaac. Yes. Jonathan Isaac goes out there, just runs like he just runs up and down that court. Playing defense, blocking shots, and he just does so much that it's just all you feel is they energy when they running out there. I like Jalen Suggs as a candidate for that award yeah. as mm -hmm. well. Um, Jose Alvarado as a candidate oh, for that award. Oh, Jose, yeah. Even T.J. McConnell, T.J. Yeah. McConnell as a candidate for that award. That's a good yeah. one. I'll give it mine is Josh Hart. 
Yeah. That, I think Josh. Josh Hart. That's why. That, that's the name of the award. Yes, he's what his name is. <laughs> Josh Josh sure. uh, one of my awards that I had was called the Let It Fly Award, and mm. this is for people that were, you know, took a high amount of volume threes, but they just didn't shoot the best. <laughs> the number one option is Jalen Green. Uh, okay. He shot like thirty three percent on like eight attempts, and you just know he was reading all some of his stats. But like, it be some nights you just gotta chill. If you two for eight, two for nine, <laughs> get to the basket Bro, a little bit more. In March, I saw a video of this. In March alone, yeah, he took four threes and looked away before they went in. <laughs> four of them. I mean, man, we know he, he made, made all one. four. Oh, okay. he made all four of them. And that's just like crazy. That's crazy to me. And the only other person to do something like that. This is not like an official statistic, obviously. It's Steph Curry doing his. Yeah. Uh, unanimous MVP season. But four in one month is insane. Um, that's why I'm kind of okay with him shooting the shots because he can do stuff like that. <laughs> um, who else is a guy that does that? I had uh, I also had Jordan Poole on here. Yes. yes. Did not shoot the ball very well. He takes like seven I'm, or eight I'm a game. Only shoots like around archetype. 30%. I'm seeing an archetype in there. Another one, and this is – this is the stretch one, but it's a lot of times where it's like when the nights he's not missing, you want him to get to the basket more. I put Jason Tatum on here too. He does shoot mm. a lot better than these guys, but it's times you're like, Jason, just get to the bucket. Okay. I like that. I like that. Some other people for that award. See, I guess I don't be thinking about he take them and don't make them as much as I think about. It's more so he makes them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I'm not, I'm not mad at that Well, My first award, um, again, I mentioned this early in the show, I'm going to miss him. But instead of it being a single player, let's talk about the teams, non-Houston Rockets, because I think Houston Rockets are the unanimous one because they're a good team. Yeah. Of the other nine teams that missed it, who are y'all candidates for I'm going to miss them? Hmm. Um, it's a tough one. It's one of those awards like Clutch Player of the Year where you don't give a damn about, but you have to put somebody on the ballot. You talking about going into the playoffs? Yeah, because these teams won't play again until next season. I guess the Jazz. The Jazz have had an okay. up and down season. They had that spark where it was really fun to watch. The Jazz are also a competitive bad team where, like, on any given night, they can give your favorite team who's in the middle of a playoff positioning race an L. You know what I mean? Keontae George had moments. Laurie Markin, obviously. Walker Kessler. Colin Sexton. Um, when he was there, Kelly Olenek and whatnot. They are well coached. They play hard. They don't quit. And um, even, you know, even in games that they necessarily might not win, they have they have a certain level of competitiveness that they bring to the game so plus they got Larry marketing so uh, plus they got Larry marketing so he's uh, one of those players that can have like game changer impact playing, on it yeah. yeah i hope he gets a real extension i saw a stat that jeremy grant hasn't played in april in like four years yeah i saw that too <laughs> isn't that crazy because he hasn't played on the team oh, boy, he just takes a vacation early yeah, just, uh, yeah my boy be like sweetheart <laughs> Yes, it's December, but I want you to start playing in April. Trip. <laughs> 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 she got that bag. You know? Yeah, no, you, you might as well. Um, somebody give another award. My second award is the He BB New York. He what? Why you make everything to an acronym? Because <laughs> yeah, it's acronym. <laughs> I'll just try to read my acronym. <laughs> He'll be better next year. Okay, word. So examples is. I think before this year, there were some writers on the wall that Denny was going to have a really good year. Mm -hmm. There were some writers on the wall that Kaminga would have a really good year. Who are some guys that had some uh, some years or moments this year where it wasn't that year, but you think next year is that year for them? From School Henderson. I think School has shown us some moments this season where he's had some pretty solid games to where you would see him go the out school there. school that didn't make you all rookie? Yeah, but okay. he still has some moments. Just he, he really ain't got no choice but to be better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, yeah this is a cop-out because you're right. He can only get better. Oh. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, that's a good question. My one that comes to mind, and this player has got better throughout the course of the season, Devin Vassell. I think Devin Vassell next season is going to come in and put a lot of Break people out, on yeah. notice. Yeah, He, was so, damn, he was so good this year. For yes, sure. Yeah. But like the last month or so, He's been averaging like 20. Jeremy Sohan could be a guy also yeah. who's a lot better because now they won't start him playing at point guard. They'll have him playing his natural position. It's kind of like a double-A sword because sometimes in March slash April you'll see a player go off. You're like, oh, that's him. The, that's the Mikael Bridges. That's all I was trying to tell um, Rocket fans. Jalen Green is on a nice run, but chill on your, your assumptions because if it tail off, you're going to be back mad. Uh, and they took they get defensive over that. But uh, Noah Co Clowney. Core Kispert. And Banton, Delano Banton. Corey Delano, he, he made another one of my awards. Oh, he did? He yeah, did. Noah Clowney and Banton for me. 
Okay, that's a good one. Uh, Trey Murphy the third. Watson is a good one too. Um, the next one I got is a, just this very very simple one: league pass MVP. Mm. This team is not on national TV tonight, but I'm I'm searching for their game. No matter who who they going against, for, me, but it was for this the one specific person though, oh, not one a team. Person. Um, but you cannot say Victor Wembanyama because say, yeah. that's the easy one. Yeah. So who else? Who was my lead pass guy that I would love to mm-hmm. watch? Um, Let me go back. And Paolo Bancaro. Oh wow! Did not expect to hear Paolo's name, yeah. especially not first. Shout out to Paolo. Here are the people that were candidates for me. I, I didn't know if I, y'all win candidates or not. Anthony Edwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, simple as Nikola Jokic or Luka Doncic. Yeah. You ain't got to go super obscure, but this is like a player that when they're playing, I am on. It is on TV, and I'm glued to it. Yeah, I'm trying I not to give my favorite guys, player. Like, I, I thought we was trying to go with the guys that maybe are like not Jokic and Luka. I, I feel like that's Yo, what Jokic I'm trying and to do. Luka, like, I like must watch TV. My mm-hmm. answer is Kyrie Irving, but I mean, damn, is that surprising anybody? Nope. And you, it would kind of coincide with Luca in a way. <laughs> no, because if I'm watching, I'm watching. I mean, you, yeah, he you closed watch. his eyes when Luca got the ball. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. See, he I put tape on it. his spot. His his spots. I put tape on him because I know he gets his spots. He got he a permanent blind spot. spot for Luca. You put that shit at the top of the key. Just black that out. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I got Kyrie, maybe Malik Monk. I was, no, I was gonna Monk. say, is it weird if I say Malik Monk for it? No, but hell no. Um. Trying to get anybody else, Lamelo, in those twelve nine games. games. <laughs> no, no. If, when he comes, oh, you, you, this I thought we were projecting. No, no, no. Just for oh. this this season. No, n- then never mind. Not Lamelo. Okay. Yeah, who did you say if you thought he was projecting? Paulo. So it, that's for a projection, or just it, it was this year a little bit too. Okay. I was definitely way more tuned in to Magic games than I were last year. For sure. Uh, another. I, I only have two people for this award. Um. You ain't uh, supposed this, to have anybody. You're worry. supposed to come up and ask us. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm Look at you candidates. Don't worry. He'll be better in a new role. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's a good one. Claxton. That's a real good I one. I think D-Mails. Claxton is going to be better when he's outside of Brooklyn. I think we're going to see more I like of a true this impact. One. I, like I think this. we saw it a little bit when he, was he- when he was healthy and he was playing with Kyrie and KD. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like if we put him in a different situation, you're going to see his value increase. Um, the, the next guy is Mikael Bridges. Mikael Bridges. So the Nets has, just got to yeah, blow it up. <laughs> yeah, they got a boatload of second, third, and fourth option players. That like Mikael Bridges at his peak is the dude that had guys in Mikael jail. Like that's that's the dude that we that that's like that's the that's what you want to see from Mikael. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see him out there trying to be a number one option. I want to see him playing next to a backcourt like K, D Book and Chris Paul. Like that's that's his peak version. And that, I just feel like if you, we get him on a team where he's like the starting three. And he's next to some good all star and all NBA talent, you see his value go up. Um, the guy I would say is Trey Murphy the third. Okay. Just want to see him start and play real 30 plus minutes a night. Do you want to see him on a different team or you want to see the <laughs> Pelicans make room for him to start? The jersey don't matter. I just want him to play. If mm. it's with the Pelicans, cool. If it's somewhere else, that's cool too. Yeah. I just seem like at this point, his. He seems almost like untouchable from that team. He should, uh, he should be kind of. Yeah, he should be because his potential is just so damn high. Unless you get in the the guy, which yeah, is if you're just not, not getting really... the guy, then there's no reason to even yeah trade him. I, I would saw. say Denny. Denny, yeah, I guess more or less role, but I think if you put Denny around high value basketball players or somewhere with a good culture, good coaching, um, I think Denny would look like a completely different person around see much better players. Much better defensive players. You put Denny on the Timberwolves. I, I think, think Denny is also very good defensively. He is. That's yes. why if you put him with a Rudy, good cultural, or even Miami, would stand out. You know what I mean? <laughs> You'd be throwing everybody to Miami. Boy. Certain guys just fit Miami, and I think Denny's one of those dudes that do fit Miami. Um, Denny's yes, Denny's skill set needs to be a, on the playoff team. Yeah, especially now that he can hit a three point shot. Mm-hmm. He's he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. Shout out to Denny. Um, my last award. Was how did he get open? The the most feared <laughs> three point shooters, but not the not the Steph Curry's of the yeah, world, yeah. but like the off ball shooters. Mm-hmm. And I got candidates, but do y'all have candidates where you like how did he get open? And Sam, now that he is open, Sam Splash. Merrill. Sam Rail was a good one. Dante DiVincenzo. Dante DiVincenzo is one of my. He just gonna take him, bro. He yeah. just gonna take him. I thought about Nicholas Batum. I, he is gonna <laughs> take him, but I be watching. I be like. 
how the hell is Dante DiVincenzo still getting open? Yeah. <laughs> he had 11 threes, and I was like, what are the Pistons doing? Yeah. The thing with Batum, though, for me, is that even if you're helping a little bit, once he catches up, you, it don't you, matter. Don't, you don't have a chance to even get a contest. Mm -hmm. So like, you can't even help at all. I also had players like Isaiah Joe That's good as a one. candidate. Isaiah he's, Joe. he's a movement shooter, yeah. too. And then Sam Hauser. That's a good one. Boom. Sam Hauser is another a good one of my one. candidates. I'm trying to think of it. Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen fits that perfectly. Great can. But we kind of know like, how Grayson Allen is open because the other three guys and get so much that. attention. <laughs> it's like we'll live with Grayson. And, uh, yeah, what, 47% from three this season yeah. or something like that? So that's a Grayson Allen, man. Luke Case, Nard. KCP fits that. KCP is a good one. KCP oh, the other night. MPJ, too. KCP the other night was running. This was before Jamal Murray came back. Running the two, the same two man game with Jokic, I'm like, oh my god, no, they can do can it with anybody. They can do it with everybody. They do yeah, it with everybody, Jamari, bro. <laughs> and KCP mid range shot. Yeah, he can so do it. He, he can be pull knocking up. that. Answer my question: so Jamal Murray not that good? He overrated. Because <laughs> when it comes playoff time, that man's another boss. He did um, it. when you do like if you do like an All NBA first team for the playoffs, Jamal Murray then and be on it. Yes, <laughs> he was bubble first team, wasn't he? It was him. He should have been it him. him T.J. Warren should have been there. T.J. Warren was on first team. I wonder if that's not on nobody's basketball reference, by the way. That shit was so fake. <laughs> <laughs> My last award is Yazini. <laughs> Bro, can you stop? <laughs> you stop. Yazini is crazy. The Yazini Award. Oh, my God. <laughs> which stands for y'all ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Example, Jalen, uh, J-Dub. Uh -huh. J-Dub had a really good... Rookie year, but I still feel like it he's was an like all star a, next year. Yeah, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, who's um, some guys that y'all think are good? But it's like you go in a barbershop, he's like, Oh man, that, that dude cool. It's like, No, nah, you ain't trust me, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet, man. Yep, I the sumo, baby. <laughs> Marcus Sasser, <laughs> it's a good fucking pick. Texas right, fans don't like Marcus Sasser. I should come over to where well, he Why? don't defend and he, he's a scoring oh. guard. That's always mixed feelings. Uh, so you, you think Jordan yeah. Clarkson is beloved? I bet no. Jordan, as much love we got for Jordan Clarkson, there's somebody out there that hate his game. <laughs> they just don't understand. Well, it's because it. he paints his fingernails. You know, people get upset about that. Yeah, they same way doing with uh, Caleb Williams. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait to get me a Caleb Williams jersey. Um, I had uh, seen unironically Ayo Desumo though. I'm trying to think of anybody else that you ain't seen nothing. Oh, Gigi Jackson for me. Good answer. I can't wait to see what his role looks like when everybody's back. When they, yeah, I was wondering that too. I would like to see it more solidified, more. And I, Josh just want, Josh attack, attracts so much attention, it's just going to make it so much easier. Like, I think Desmond Bain is also taking another leap. They so, be on Josh like flies on shit. Yes. You got to. I miss that Grizzlies Or Kaminga. I really do. Kaminga might be peaking. Like, he might be getting good now. I feel like there's probably another step to Kaminga, especially with more confidence, a whole nother offseason to work on shit. It's, Probably another step to Kaminga. I was thinking that with uh, when we did the different role on a different team, or like maybe it'd be better on a different team. I was thinking Kaminga, but Warriors still have like with the starters, they still have a decent situation. I think he could grow in still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think they just had Clay Thompson was very streaky this season. Wiggins wasn't on shit this season. They had two starters that helped them win championships, not be on shit, and then Draymond was suspended. So, like, they just had so much going on that it was kind of hard for them to even stay relevant. Yeah, it was cool to see. Uh, recently, they've been starting Trace Jackson Davis with Draymond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm about to look to see what those numbers look like. Because the eye test is saying that shit is working, but I don't know if the numbers Trace Jackson are Davis is also one of those dudes that just play with all heart. Bro, he's got one of the quickest he could fit first jumps. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. He could fit that. Yeah, yeah and their 200 minutes played, their, their net rating is 10.7. So, it's working. It is working. Um, I wonder if I add Kaminga to that. What, what do you be on when you do this? Uh, PBPStats.com. Oh. Not an ad, but it could be. Is it a, do I have to subscribe or? Completely free resource. Oh, shit. And, it don't, and I only use one. Bro, this, this site is one of the most slept on NBA sites. I know. You be pulling up like, you be like this combination. Where I'll be like, where is he finding It's these? a very slept on <laughs> site. You can find a bunch of shot tracking for free. Okay. Oh, Jonathan Kaminga on the left wing only shoot this percent. And this is a free, this is a free what site. What's the site name again? PBPstats.com. You is not for to use that site. <laughs> he said he don't like numbers. You don't like numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other fake awards? Uh, yeah, I still got a few left. Okay. Uh, first, uh, second one I have is Empty Stats Award. Oh. The first one goes to Jared Jackson Jr. Oh, we can't say that, though, because we know his stats are impactful. When no, they, he, they are. I'm just saying. That's why I don't believe in that saying, bro. 
I'm not a. I'm I don't not know if there's an empty stats guy in the league. I don't believe because even stats. Drummond, who was given the words "empty stats" for years, like he actually helps your team win basketball. My games. thoughts, uh, my thought process is, you put up numbers, but it's not gonna mean anything no more because your team not in the playoffs. So Wimby, I mean, yeah. You see yeah. how weird that sounds. But that was a empty stats winner, Wimby Nyama. Well, this is how the players I got. Okay. I also put Kuzma. <laughs> <laughs> I also put Kuzma on there. And then the other one was the Lato Battle with the 16 point. <laughs> Actually, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Because I had, hold on, let me see. But it means something because the Lano No, it was Miles Bridges. Up. Miles Bridges was at like 23 points. He was doing his thing, but they really, he, it was him and Brandon Miller. Okay. And I guess Grant Williams trying to get some shots with him. <laughs> okay. uh, another one I had also was Mr. Opportunity. Mm, I like that one. I went to DeJounte Murray, which I feel like he swayed a lot of, like, he raised a lot of questions when Trey Young went down and the way he was playing. Um, I also went Vince Williams Jr. again. Mm. So this was the, the flip side of the Memphis Grizzly thing. And then Delano Ben was actually our Mr. Opportunity. Blazers with the Blazers. Ain't nothing really going on there. So he was able to put up some stats. And I'm, I'm sure they're going to start looking at him a lot more, honestly. Yeah, he got a real contract. So shout out to him. Um, I was just thinking about this. Somebody recently was given an opportunity, and they've sort of been thriving. And I'm, ah, I'm was so it uh, was it Timmy Allen? No, Shout this out person to Timmy been Allen. playing like somebody. I don't remember. I was literally Big like, I was I was literally like this dude. I was watching Simone from like, has been averaging like I was eighteen. Some offense, I was like this yeah. dude. Capital. He stayed ready. He waited for his opportunity. He got it, and, and now he hooping. And I can't remember who I was just thinking about. Hmm. I think Peyton Pritchard can kind of fit on this list too. Is it going? Maybe it was Peyton Pritchard. No, because your reaction is going to be like, that's what it was. Yeah. Maybe it <laughs> you was. Just to get it out. Uh, I also had the Father Time Award um, for players 35. LeBron. <laughs> was play- it the opposite where they're starting to decline? Is that their award? No, 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 no. Oh. It's still it's just the flowers for the uh, oh, okay, work. flowers for the older players. First, I had Kevin Durant Today, up Tuesday? here. Uh, yes. First was Kevin Durant. Them, second, LeBron. Not third, close. Curry. But I, those are just the stars. I also have the role players up here. Brooke Lopez, Horford, and the last couple spots for that is either like Conley or Jeff Green. One of those guys that still play impactful game at, at a very old, old, old for basketball age. I'm not mad at the Mike Conley one for sure. He deserves some flowers. Uh, yeah, that's the NOTB award show, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know in the comment section you agree or disagree with because we care about everybody's opinions here. Um, <laughs> and also leave, also leave a like to let us know um, that you agree or disagree. The like button is how we determine those things. Not like if one. you agree or disagree. That's exactly what I just said. Um, do we have Do we have an unplugged? What gives y'all? What mostly gives y'all a nostalgic feeling? What thing? It could be a product, a person, a dr- a drive, an area. Sounds setting. Was, no, but give me the specific sound. Oh, oh, something like. I get to stumping in my Air Force One. So like music? That, that's that song bring me back to my childhood, sitting in the car, like happy, like this is my favorite song. Because mm-hmm. I got my Air Force Ones on. Like that that was I don't know. That was that's a song to me that just makes me feel nostalgic. I don't I so, like theme songs definitely. We're like, okay. um I didn't watch this kid this song this show growing up, but my sister did. So I always heard it in the background, uh, Dr. McStuffin. And mm. somehow Avery was watching it the other day, and I'm in my other room, and I'm like, "Is that Doctor McStuff?" And now I'm picturing my my sister's now about to be 15, but I'm picturing her as like a two year old because that's the sound I used to hear all the all day yeah. in our house. Your um your family was over my house recently, and your daughter left a toy at our house, and the toy doesn't you know how most toys are like here's some music, here's yeah. some lights. It's not like that. It's a very traditional toy, and it just makes like a sound oh it's like a caliper. i don't know yeah. if, even know if you're talking but that sound oh i the, bought that yeah okay so you know exactly I, yeah, what i'm yeah, talking about. about that sound i damn near stole that toy from her <laughs> because that sound brings me back to when i was a shorty and i yeah. don't know exactly what it ref- it reminds uh, me of but it brings me peace in a way yeah when i picked that out i was like there's something about this toy that it seems like I would love it as a kid, <laughs> so I gave yeah. it to her, and she loved, and she likes it too. Yeah, I will sit in the living room with Avery with this toy in my hand as I'm doing something else because I, <laughs> it makes me feel happy. It makes me, it reminds me of when I was young. I don't know what the sound is that yeah. it reminds me of, but it reminds me of something that was good back in the day. Skating rinks mm. make me feel nostalgic as well. 
that Dr. McStuffins, I feel the same exact way, and I think about my younger sister too, with Little Weinstein's. Ah, oh. we're going on a trip, trip in a rocket ship. Uh, uh, two uh, weeks. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I used to hear that all the time. I don't know. They pieces. remade it and yeah. that made it popular, but I hate it when they remade it and put an eight hundred eight beat on it because I'm like <laughs> that made me think. That made me think of a specific time. I used to take my sister to school. I would let her eat her breakfast. That would come on, and this is even before she was going to school. Actually, she wasn't. This is a young, 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 and yeah, I just yeah, it makes it takes me to the same thing. There's a certain piece of nostalgia that makes me feel anxious, though. Like what? Movies. What, what movie, though? Not a specific movie, but the, if there is a movie I watched when I was a kid and I'm re-watching it, it makes me feel anxious. Like old? Make old. I guess it's the, what the, the parallel is. Because mm. um, like if I watch Lion King, I'm watching it for the movie or like Tarzan. Mm-hmm. Those are like probably some of my favorite childhood movies that like it, it doesn't make me feel old. It's just kind of like, oh, man, I used to really love this. Mm-hmm. See, I, I feel like when I watch that type of stuff, like, I think, for example, I watched Monsters, Inc., like, oh, maybe a shit. few months ago. But to watch it as, like, someone who's 26-year-old versus, like, a little kid and you notice, like, everything, I think it just it just makes it better. Honestly, I think it's fun to have both. <clears throat> it's fun to have both perspectives, that kid perspective or point of view and also the adult one. I agree with that. I kind and of forgot like some how of the many jokes in those movies went over your head as a kid. Yes. Like there's adult jokes in some of those movies that you won't get as a kid. Cars. Cars was on in the background yesterday. I watched Cars. I just once, watched that recently maybe, too. Until recently. Um and there's a there's a scene where Lightning McQueen is like meeting fans and stuff and there's uh girl cars, girl persona yeah. cars and they flash their lights. I'm like, bro, that's like them showing <laughs> yes. their, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and yeah. as a kid, I never put that together. Yeah. And then now I'm looking at this like, bro, my two-year-old is watching this right but now. They, but and they never will know. Yeah, they don't get it. But when you watch it as an adult, you get certain bro, when I, Yes. But when I was watching Cars 2, he has a thing with like the little rusties, right? Where it's like you're supposed to put it on your car and it, it just take the rust off. And he had to do the thing where he got to talk in front of all the rusted cars and in my like I didn't really think about it as a kid but it made me think now is but he's like man I don't want to go talk to all them rusted cars I hate the rusted cars and it just sounded so yeah. like so like left and I'm like oh okay yeah. <laughs> a lot of a lot of um, insinuated racism in kids movies that yeah. you just didn't think about um also in the Scooby Doo movie like young old me didn't really think about Shaggy just smoking weed, and oh. all of his jokes were about him smoking weed. I had no idea. Yeah, always yeah, yeah, it's yeah always just always that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's some other ones. I know um, SpongeBob has a lot of SpongeBob. If you go through it, there's adult jokes in there that you probably miss as a yes, kid. Hundred percent. But I can't. Really I also remember. think that's part of them having like the moms be so like. Voluptuous, I guess you would say, like them baby <laughs> build, baby build, yeah, they be building them cartoons. Top five Lowest cartoon Griffin, moms. Are you finna say Timmy Turner? Oh no, no, is that is that Timmy Turner mom? Timmy no, Turner mom is no, thick. Dexter's mom is thick. Oh, Dexter's mom is <laughs> Dexter's thick. mom right. walking around with that. I didn't right. actually expect you to give me a list. I was just trying. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep going. <laughs> no, <laughs> keep like going. It. I remember adult joke with Timmy Turner when his dad was like, I sat on a banana once. And it changed my life. <laughs> that was Jimmy Neutron. That was Jimmy Neutron. Oh, yeah, was Jimmy Neutron. He Jimmy said, Neutron. I sat on a banana once and it changed my life. Bro, I, I always see that meme. I always see that meme. As a kid, you don't get it. I no, as a kid, that I would have Timmy, It's lie. Timmy Turner's dad. I and he must have drank like some milk or something, but it's like all on his face and he's going like this, like he's wiping it off. <laughs> What's the joke there? You got to look at the picture to know the joke. Oh, okay, word, word, word. Music is one of those things, though, that... Any 2K song. Every now... For sure. Um, little by little. Every, that's that's that shit. Yeah, that's one of the um, ones. Every time I hear a song now, as an adult, that brings me that feeling, I download it. I go mm-hmm. immediately. That. Movies have a lot of them. So I just downloaded a couple of days ago, before I let go, uh, Frankie Beverly and Maze. And y'all probably don't know it off the top of y'all head, but it's in a lot of black movies where, like, they about the barbecue. Mm-hmm. And that's that, you made me happy. Mm. You know who got I'll play it after. Or, you yeah, made uh, Yeah, yeah, that yeah right I know there. that song. Yeah, that yeah. Right there. Or that, uh, yeah, hell yeah. That just, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. 
Yeah. A lot of the stuff I be getting back from like our parents had that music, bro. I be thinking about that. Oh, you know, Jasmine Sullivan. I feel like it's a nostalgia mm. vibe for me because break like, the windows out the car. I break the lions, windows. tigers, lions, and bears. I used like, to listen to that yeah. while in the car with my mama. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like that. Was That's like, why like, I have that he with should, Jill, Jill Scott, Jill Scott, and Erica Badu with my stepmom. My my auntie used to ride around to that key, that Keisha yeah. Cole. Sade Man. was. I heard mm. we was in a store one day and I heard Sade and I was like, damn, I was singing it. Now, like my mama used to play this all the time. Yeah, bro. For real? Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel about uh, what is, what is that album called? Baduism, right? Is that the, is that Erica Badu's like debut album or her second album or something? Something like that. Either way, the one. What's with the, the cover of it? Yeah, what's I the can't. Cover? I don't know the cover oh, though. Okay. Because we she had the CD and it was there's just always in the car. I've heard there's a cover of one. That's I, like I mean, a bunch I guess I got my phone right here. There's, I feel like since we like obviously all of our moms in our life those. Artists, those female artists that they listened to when we were growing up, it always brings back a nostalgia feeling to us because like we hear it. Like when I was at Drake concert, Twenty One Savage came out to Fantasia, and I was like, "Holy shit, <laughs> this is like." I still remember when throwback. Fantasia was on American Idol. Yeah, yes. I remember Ruben her Ruben Stutter, Stutter. Yes, and Ruben what was Stutter. the white guy's name? Ah, Archuleta or was that the different season? It, David Archuleta. David, David Archuleta. David Archuleta. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Archuleta. Is, that, I heard that, Archuleta. Archuleta. that might be a different okay, season. Okay, I remember that. But at one time, Ameri American Idol had the world on a you, chart. Yes. You gather around your TV with your family. <laughs> you had to watch yeah, American Idol for sure. That and America's Next Top Model was yeah, like yeah. in our house. American was like, Idol still a thing. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. The, I think um, it's, who's on it now. Simon Cowell made such a big name for himself. Oh, I was He's, just seeing an episode recently. I think it was on there like the barber shop or some shit like that. What was my man's name? Jackson. Ray, uh, um, was uh, it no, no, it's a no for Randy, me, dog. Randy, Jay. it's Randy, a no for me, it's dog. It's a no for me, dog. Isn't American Idol also the show where the dude went on there with the pants on the ground song? Is pants that American Idol? And he got yeah. sued because he stole the damn song and didn't let people know he stole. Nigga the like song. a fool with your pants. On the yeah, um, who he stole that song from? I don't. Don't ask me. I didn't even. Know so they got song. Luke Bryan, Katy Perry, and Lionel Richie as the judges now. Oh yeah, Lionel Richie. Yeah, that's yeah, three heavy hitters. That is, but it ain't the same. Yeah. Simon Cowell being mean was yeah. But they, um, and then Paula Abdul. Remember Paula, Paula Abdul? Abdul. She always so wanted sweet. to be nice. Yeah. yeah. Babe, I just I like don't... when TV shows parody American yeah. Idol. They had a yeah. cool dude, a sweetheart, and an asshole. Yeah. Like Simon Psych Kyle, like, you are the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. And Paula Abdul was like, sweetheart, I think you will be a great manager. <laughs> 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 Bro, that's why I said, have y'all ever seen that dance? I, my sister be watching this. I might be forgetting the name, but it's like Dancing Monsters or something like that. But it's basically just like that. But instead, instead of the singing, they're dancing, mm. and it's, they have like it's like animated. So you're a monster instead Mike, of it's actually. You, you. make me happy. Because it's an it, animated reality bro, show. Bro, I, I gotta look this it up real quick. But it's basically like people are nervous to go out there in front by themselves, so they come out as like a monster. I don't oh, know. It's not animated. They have suits on. I don't know what the hell it is. Hold on, bro. I got to look it up, bro. I've seen it okay. one time. My sister loves it. The best, the best animated reality show of all time. It's Total Kim Drama Island. Total Drama. Fans, no? Nickelodeon? No. It was uh, Cartoon Network, I think. Cartoon Network, yes. Total yes. Drama was like, Island was, was a survivor like ripoff. Yes, but it was, it was so amazing, bro. With the, with the white guy was like the lead. Yes, yes. Oh, no, I've never seen so it. So amazing. Yes. You can watch that as an adult and yes. enjoy that show, oh, bro. Because my sister watched it. Was CGI. it and, and my CGI mom account. was like, you peep what they doing? Cause I used to just be chilling on my phone, and I'm like, "Oh, I see. This is like, yeah, it's like a reality they TV." They might have revamped it in the last couple of years. I could be wrong there. I haven't seen that in a long time. Total Drama that, Island had and me that too. I feel like had all the like the the stuff you probably you, you wouldn't know as a kid, but if you watched it as an adult, you'd be like, "Oh shit, they talking about that." Yeah, it's kind of geared towards teenagers, it really. Is. Um, but I was watching it as a shorty and not really getting a lot of the stuff for so. Mm -hmm. Um, what what a great. Show I love the nostalgic music that make me. Feel like I'm that kid in the back seat, so I, yeah. I, I have that feeling with a lot of like commercialized mainstream songs, like uh, Jennifer Lopez, Ja Rule shit. Are you Ellie? Oh, yeah. um, you know what? Uh, feather. Damn, Damn, Nelly. I feel boy. like Nelly has a lot of songs. There's this one specific that song that always made me think of my stepmom. Um, it's that Eric Sermon, uh, just like music, yeah. oh, but Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and no, he sampled Marvin mm -hmm. and. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's some shit my dad would be listening to. Candy stores be giving me when you walk in and this got like that chocolate type aroma going around, like the popcorn. Oh, old yes. candy stores. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess that's a wrap. Of, uh, numbers on the board, man. Let us know some of your nostalgic sensory devices, whether it's music and be specific. Don't tell me all oh, cardboard boxes. 
<laughs> I'm looking at a cardboard box. That's why I said that. But you know, don't tell say somebody music. you appreciate them today, and you love them. Yes. Tell somebody, oh, I love you much. I just want to rip your face off and wait on my birthday. <laughs> just like music. Take us out, Austin. Hey. I